All right, look, if I asked you to tell me how many red cars you saw today on your way to work, you probably have a tough time remembering all of them. But what if I said this to you earlier? For every red car you saw, I'd give you 50 bucks. I bet you wouldn't have a tough time recognizing those. Well, guess what? That's how luck works. What you look at is what you see. If you look out for opportunities, if you look out for blessings, you'll notice more of them. Yes, that changes everything. It changes absolutely everything. So if all you're looking for are all the reasons why you can't succeed, you're gonna find them. If what you look for are the reasons why you can succeed and all the opportunities, guess what? You'll find those. What you look at is what you see. Wow. Have you guys ever heard that wow. before? <laughs> yeah, that was 12 awesome. red cars. Yeah. I was wondering where you're going with that. I know. And I wrote that up <laughs> What there, sparked so that? What sparked that? I actually saw someone else say the same thing earlier on social media. I'm like, I'm going to steal that. That's, that's pretty good. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> and then not give them any credit. Yeah, you know, I don't know where I said No, it's, it's, it's some a guy. Apparently, it's a common thing to hear. Um, but I mean, I've, I've heard it said in different ways. It's true. Yeah. It's yeah. so true. It's like, um, you know, it's like when you feel blessed, for example, you start to see blessings when you feel like you're just a victim well you start to see all the reasons why you, you yeah, it's are a, a mindset victim. shift and in fitness if all you're looking at is a scale you'll miss all the other incredible things that are happening to your body as you embark on this fitness journey um if all you see is the mirror you're going to miss out on all these amazing things right so um it's important to keep your your scope wide to be present and to to have that positive outlook like all right what are the positive things that are happening where how am i moving in the right direction not only does it allow you to see the things that are good, but it allows you, I think more importantly, to reframe the things that are tough. Um, I think I brought this up on an earlier podcast. I can't remember, th there's actually a term for this, but when people look back on challenging times in their life, they tend to look back on them and they tend to reframe them and say, you know, that was really tough, but here's where I learned, here's where I grew from. So we, we can do this you know, on our own when we look back and it makes a big difference. So it's interesting you're bringing this up. Um, I was actually building this, this list last night and so for the audience that doesn't know we've we just recently have launched the 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 40 plus program right and in there is the first time that we have ever put any real emphasis on lifestyle stuff yeah. included and so i've decided to one not only follow that but i'm also going to kind of add to that list and this is my thought process. So this is what I was doing as I was making that list. So we have a bunch of things on there for, for lifestyle things to encourage people that get the program. But then I had a bunch of things that I wanted to add in there, like reading. And I'm also trying to get back into the reading the Bible. So I want to have my book that I read. Then I want to, I want to work on my you know spiritual health. And um, there was something else that I was just telling Katrina that I wanted to do. I can't remember. Oh, like as far as doing for others and giving. And like, so I have all these like things, right? That, and and I, I, I would categorize them all as like my overall health right and my thought is it, the, at first glance someone might go that's a lot you're going to overwhelm yourself with all that i'm like that's my my big goal these are all the things i'm going to list off and part of why and of course all the basic stuff like you know i'm eating better hitting my protein intake and all the other things we talk about but what i what i know that i'm setting myself up for is an opportunity to move the needle in the right direction on any of those categories. And so long as I'm and I'm chipping away at at any of them, I'm moving in the right direction. Now, ultimately, I want to do them all, right? right. Ultimately, I want to read this, read that one, give to someone to do this, hit my workout, hit my protein, do, do the water, do... But the really the way I look at it and the way I would teach clients is that you pay attention to all those things because all those things are serving you and making you a better version of yourself, a healthier version of yourself. And there's going to be times when, unfortunately you don't get to the gym or you don't hit your macros like you're supposed to, or maybe I didn't read the book, but maybe I did a couple of the other things and doing those couple other things, moving the needle in the right direction is still a win. It's not the ultimate win for the day. It doesn't mean that I, I hit it out the park, but what happens is if you can, if you can focus on those things, it's a lot easier to stay motivated to keep getting better and keep it versus all you think about is the scale. I want to lose 10 pounds. I just want to lose 10 yeah. pounds and you get fixated on that. And that's all your, and then you have a day where the scale goes up, you know, or you didn't get your workout. And then you're like beating yourself up over this, this one failure, this one thing you're focused on versus having all these things that I'm trying to keep my eyes open for and pay attention to and get better at and being able to celebrate those wins. I've just had way more success with framing my my health and fitness pursuit in, in like that or from that lens. Oh, 100%. Yeah. Uh, you, know, um, you know, I look for, you know, I've, I've, I've been challenged with finding opportunities to, you know, connect with my older kids. Teenagers can be kind of tough like that. 
And, um, you know, my wife's always telling me, just create space. I'm like, what do you mean create space? She's like, just be around them where you guys are both doing nothing. You know, driving in the car, hey, don't be on your phone. We're just going to drive. Or just sit with them and hang out and have nobody be distracted type of deal. And so I'm like, okay, I'm doing that. And um, at first I'm like, it's not working. We're just sitting there and we're bored or whatever. Like, what's going on type of deal? And she's like, but are you guys sitting together? Like, well, yeah. She's like, okay, well, is is that more than what you were doing before? I "I guess you're right. You're right. Now, of course, as I continue to do this, then those opportunities do arise and we start Mm -hmm. to connect more. And sometimes it's through challenge, sometimes it's through whatever, but it's really about where you place your, your focus. And we tend to look at such small things or we tend to measure our success based off of like money's a big one, right? Like businesses, people will start a business or start working and they'll look at just the profit. Do you know how many businesses were not pro- like Netflix? You know, how long it was not profitable before it became ultra pro- profitable. Like if every year they were like, Oh my God, guys, we're in the red you know, this sucks. They might've bailed or made decisions that would have tried to force profit. That would have been not so smart in the Mm. long, in the long run. So it's just really about how you look at things. And, you know, I, I brought up luck earlier. You know, when you talk to people who feel like they're blessed or lucky, it's really these opportunities that pop up that they were just kind of open to. It's like, um, you know, like, Oh, I went to this business event trying to talk about my product and I ended up Failing that product actually didn't succeed, but because I was there, yeah. I met this one guy. Right. We became friends. And it turns out his cousin had this other idea. We started working together, and it's like they, they're, you're, they're able to look back and connect the dots to, and that's how I became. It's preparing successful. for that moment. That's right. You know, and it's, it's that const, constant thought process and preparation of how to you know create that kind of space for something awesome to happen. I mean, I've I've actually been talking a lot about this stuff too with my kids, especially my youngest, because, um, you know, there's, there's bits and bouts of frustration and it's, it's very, um, frequent. And so what, something I've been trying to do with him actually over the last few weeks has to, to start reframing a lot of these things. And, um, we, before bed and I'll, I'll put him to bed and we'll, we'll talk about three things he's grateful for. And so he's, he's constantly trying to kind of like figure out those, those things that like recurringly he's like very thankful that he has or like are going well for him, but also too one thing that he's, he's going to improve tomorrow. And it's always like the next day, just one thing. I just want you to improve anything. And we go through the list. It's like, you know, the, the, you know, being on top of your schoolwork, uh, you know, accomplishing these things in gymnastics, um, you know, uh, having a good time with your friends and, and, you know, being a good friend or, or, you know, speaking up in class, learning something, you know, whatever it is, I can try and give them as many examples as I can, but, uh, it's starting to kind of build some momentum. And so we're going to see if hopefully like he can start it's a skill. learning that. Cause it is, it, it's, it's not just something like, otherwise we're just reactive and like, Oh, you know, yeah. when it's awesome, it's like, yeah, all these things are happening to me. And it's like, no, it's not like, it's not magical that that's happening. The, there's a, there's a process. To it. Psychologists and, you know, experts on the human mind will tell you that the stories we tell ourselves is how we frame the world. It literally becomes the roadmap and the, the lenses through which, which we view things. Right. So you're either telling yourself a story or you're letting someone else tell you a story. And typically the other people that are telling you a story are trying to sell you something, trying to manipulate you or scare you or cause anxiety. So a story is being told and that story is how you're going to view things. So you can either make it intentional, like you're telling your son, this is what we got to do. And you got to make it intentional. Look, it's like living in the, in the modern world. If you live in the modern world, and you don't intentionally try to eat healthy, you don't intentionally try to be active and exercise properly, you are going to be unhealthy. That's the default, 100%. That's that's what's going to happen. Or you can be intentional about how you live, how you exercise, how you eat, and you can, you know, you can change that story. And so that's essentially, you know, what this this is all kind of about. I love that. Um, I think it's a Chinese proverb. Maybe Andrew can can find it for the editing team. Hopefully, can can put it in. It'd be cool to insert it right here for the for the YouTube and Spotify uh, viewers. Um, but it's the one where uh, he ta- and I, I remember hearing. Oh, where his son gets called yeah, off yeah. to war. His son gets called off. Or, no, that's before terrible. that, he, first he falls off. Though he gets a horse. I think he gets lucky and like a, a horse, like a horse just ran uh, ran away. He caught a he caught a wild horse, and then that 
that oh how lucky you are oh maybe you know what I'm yeah. saying and then and then his son he falls right, off the horse breaks his leg yeah, breaks his leg oh my god I'm so sorry well maybe you know and then it, then it finds out that they, they come by and it's like they're recruiting for for young men to go off to war and because his son was injured from the horse he didn't have to go to war and so his son I love say, that proverb oh it's so good it's I mean it and it's such a, a a good way I think to to look at things in our life that. You know, we look at, and when I think about the the things that I've gone through in my forty something years, um, the stuff that was some of the most difficult and challenging and stressful and hard, it also resulted in some of the best things afterwards. It's just when you're in it, when you're in it, and you're not seeing the results or it's not happening for you, you're getting frustrated. It's like, yeah, that's the the difficult part is to push through. The difficult part is to to battle through that. And to not give up and to stay focused and to to reframe this as an opportunity for growth, an opportunity to get better, an opportunity to learn. And then when you make it to that, right, on the other, uh, uh, on the other side resides success, right? So if I can get on the other side of fear, then there's where the success is yeah. at. And so as you fear this oh, unknown of I don't know or I'm going to make it or I'm failing, man, the other side is so great. And what I found is the harder, the darker, the worse the thing is in my life – Obviously, the more challenging, but also the more rewarding when you get to this side. Things that are minor obstacles and challenges, we all face them every day, right? And they're little. Eh, I mean, great. I, I solved that problem. Not a big deal. But when it's like, man, that would have crushed another person. Well, you, or, it's forced you to change and grow. Yeah. That's how you're able to get out of the other. And it yeah. brings the best version of you out. I totally. mean, to me, I think that's uh, remind, so. Remind, you know, I remember uh, I've told this story before, but I had this one woman. This was a turning point in my career as a trainer where she was coming to work out with me and you know she was supposedly keeping a food diary and she wasn't losing weight and it turned out she was lying or, or not being honest on the food diary and i had this really like basically confronted her and was a bit aggressive with this her. one you blew out yeah and she never came back and uh i remember thinking like oh man like uh, you know, my whole lens was you know that she has to lose weight like that's why she hired me but i ended up missing out on the fact that a woman who never exercised before was showing up consistently twice a week and had been with me. Mm -hmm. Like that was a win. The fact that she was showing up yeah. and, and my asshole approach basically blew her out. And I'm pretty sure she never went back. I'm pretty sure her, the experience was so bad that she probably never tried again. If she did, thank God. But if I hadn't looked at it, if I had looked at it differently, because later on I was good at that. Later on I'd have people who'd be so frustrated with their weight, you know, fact that they weren't losing weight. And I'd tell them, but you're showing up. Mm -hmm. And then they would be like, you're right, you're right. And then eventually the weight loss would happen. But yeah, I did the opposite, you know, initially. Today's giveaway is the super bundle. Here's how you can win it. Leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop it. Subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. If you win, we'll let you know in the comment section. We also have our brand new program launch. There's only two days left for MAPS 40 plus. This is for people who are fit and healthy, who already work out, who are 40 years old or over. This is not a watered down weekend version of other programs. This is a legit workout program uh, that just takes into special considerations the challenges that happen after you turn 40 years old. Again, it's a launch, so it's on sale. If you're interested, click on the link at the top of the description below. You have two days left for the launch special. All right, back to the show. Speaking of kids and stuff, I got to tell you guys, this, toddlers are great because <laughs> a toddler's day can be ruined by almost anything. So this is hilarious because this morning, and I knew this would happen. So in the morning, I'll make my three-year-old um, two egg yolks and a slice of toast. This is like his traditional breakfast. We talk, he's what he likes to eat. So he went with his mom to Starbucks. Sometimes she goes in the morning, so she took him. So I'm getting his breakfast ready. And I opened the bag of, we got this gluten-free bread. It's really good. But every once in a while, not su super common, but you get the sliced bread. And the bread itself has got like a hole in it or like doesn't, isn't shaped oh, yeah. the way it normally is. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, damn it, dude. The bread's got, it's kind of got like a hole. This is like the breaking, this is like the breaking perfect. of the banana. Yes, dude. Right? Like that happened <laughs> any, with any parents. Ever so it's got like this hole in it kind of, right? So I'm like, oh man. I'm like, well, I'll just throw this piece away. But it, well, anyway, the hole ends up going almost all the way through. I'm like, I'm not going to throw away a whole loaf of bread. So I find the one slice where the hole is maybe not so whatever. <laughs> Toast it. Put it on the table. I'm not going to say anything. Uh -huh. Sure enough, dude. You know, he no sits way. down. Oh, he sits down. There's a hole in my bread. I'm like, oh. I'm like yeah, it's, like lose his shit. it's all good. It I don't want that. You know, he starts just, ah. I'm like, oh, bro. 
Oh, oh man, I should just cut it off, damn it. <laughs> to me. I should just cut off the piece of bread and give it to him. But even then, oh it would have been. Oh, my God. Dude. Kids are hilarious like that, They dude. are funny. He's like so that, funny. Dude. He's so funny. <laughs> give me some water. Okay. Not in that cup, in this cup. No, now I want to hold it. Okay, you hold it. No, you got it. Now I spilled it. Ah, well, that's because you used the wrong cup, dude. <sighs> Oh, just, a, <laughs> just on pins and needles. It's just a good time. It's yeah. gonna be great because you yours are so close in age. It's gonna be fun uh, to to see the two of them in the next like probably year. Because oh, he's been he turned. She's at she's at one right now. She's one. Yeah, so a little ones. Yeah, one. so two's of two's when it starts to really get fun. Well, he's got some. He's got definitely some jealousy uh, with her, mm. and, but. Uh, my wife is so good at getting the, him to identify or getting the kids to identify how they feel. So he'll say it now. Like, I'm jealous. You know, I don't want her to play with my toys. I don't like her right now. You know, And, and so he'll say it out loud. But he's been going through this like little period, right? Well, kind of turned a corner yesterday where I was with both of them and he was including her in the game that we were playing, which normally he wouldn't do. Normally it'd be like, he just wants me and, her, me and him to play and yeah, she can't, yeah, yeah. can't even approach me. So he was giving her the ball to throw, and then and then he had this little toy that there was this, this door that opens, and he spent like ten minutes. That's an eternity for a three year old. Yeah, he spent like ten minutes teaching her how to open the door, and then she would try to do it. No, Dolly, it's like this, and he's trying. And he was like so patient. I was just sitting there, and I you know I pull out my phone trying to sh like, hopefully he doesn't see me recording because that ruins the whole thing. Right, right. Yeah. So I caught some of it, but it was so cute. So I'm like, oh, are we? Are we on the other end of the jealousy thing? I'm so. always so mm. torn in those moments, right? Like of like just being present and like yeah. enjoying it versus recording it. Because there's, I see the the plus to both, right? Like obviously you're in that moment and you're like, oh my God, this is such a wonderful moment. And then you're like, oh, here, I'm going to bring my phone out, right? But then there's also, I, I've caught some of those on camera and it's so awesome because I'll go back and I'll watch that and like oh i remember if they see the camera it ruins it though yeah that's the, the key is that you don't allow them to see that you're recording and you're doing that i just i caught the uh, um max the other night this was really just a few nights ago and he was like in his bed by himself like he can't read but he thinks he can read right so he's like <sighs> making up a story all by himself just reading through the book you know and yeah. like literally for like awesome. he was doing it for like 10 minutes i'm like oh my god i gotta catch this on film so i, I creeped over to the door and I was, I was like standing right right at his doorway and i probably got a good solid minute of watching of recording before he popped up hey you're right there. you're uh, recording me and then he saw but uh. i was watching you read yeah so i caught you. yeah it was ever it was um he was singing in the shower he had his the music <laughs> oh playing, that's great and he was like just belting it out you know he's really getting into uh singing and, and like trying to like find his voice and it's like it's it's cute it's hilarious but it's also like you know he would kill me if you knew like i i kind of went down the hallway and I, you know like the door was closed and everything but i, I just wanted to capture just like his voice what was he it. singing is he singing like popular songs or? yeah it was like um it dude it's all like 70s rock stuff oh, that's what he's saying that's gonna make yeah. you warm right? wow that's wild he's really into it dude and he'll he'll sing like uh yeah all like the really impossible song like journey and stuff <laughs> like that. I'm, just like, I'm like you got you, you gotta start yeah, yeah, with yeah. like the ramones or you know like something that's like you know somewhat like easy range stuff like, or whatever good yeah. lord you know yeah. i don't even i don't even try to do any of that stuff uh but oh there's this other funny thing i was gonna bring up to you guys with the kids like there's so in gymnastics they do the white elephant thing which um you know they're 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 kind of picking uh so white elephant everybody brings a gift yeah you pick one and then someone can trade it with another one. Oh, okay so How's it's not work? white elephant so it's like it, it's like a draw of the hat thing but, oh, okay. it, but it's like a a a certain secret Santa secret Santa. Oh, that's what it is. Okay. okay. I was trying to figure out what the hell it is, but okay. <laughs> they pick it and it's like 20 bucks or something. Yeah, like, yeah, I'm like, Santa. what can you get for 20 bucks anymore? You can't you know? even get 10 bucks like, for 20 nothing. Bucks anymore. No. You can't get any like pack of gum or something. But so <laughs> this guy, like no, it says cheeseburger costs 20 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I have no idea. I was like trying to think of what I would even have asked for. And so I think some of the kids in there, like the old, so there's older kids and then the younger kids. And so uh, Everett got this older kid who uh, handed him his list. And it was like, it had, it, okay, so here's what it is. It said um, he, it, he wanted window swiping. 
and we're like window swiping. Window swiping. What's that? What does that even mean? And so this this turned into like a like we're all driving home and we're like trying to like think about this. Is this some kind of urban dictionary term? <laughs> and then we're going down the rabbit hole looking. We're asking all the other parents like, what does window swiping mean? Is this something I'm like unaware of? You know, like all this stuff. And I'm like, this kid just must be trolling us like like crazy. You know, like what? And so we start trying. Nobody could figure it out. And so what we're going to end up doing, it's like, I guess like, it, you know, we're going to get some kind of like a squeegee and then like, you still don't know what it is. No, I have no idea. Oh my God. What a horrible story. You have no idea. Like this whole time, like you guys window swiping and no one got to the bottom of it. Nobody got to the bottom of it. Dude, this kid's <laughs> like, you Google it. Yes, Googled it, looked through it. Did you like Dictionary? Anything, like you have said? no idea. And then it's window like, swiping present or something like that, or window swiping GIF. What is yeah, it? ask the Google master. Yeah. yeah. I'm <laughs> so ahead. I'm so nobody bad in the story. I thought we we're going to find out what it was. I'm like, I'm like what no, is it? <laughs> no, so, so my thing is like, he's. I think it's a troll, dude. I think he's trying to like be funny guy. And so we're going to be that with like a Dora the Explorer, you know, like like stupid oh, like card. What? Oh, yeah, what's that guy? You know, swiper, no swiping. Swiper, no I'm trying swiping. to think what else. If he maybe spelt something wrong. And you're just reading it wrong. No, it's it. it's it's completely like who? Okay, here's a funny one then for you because of the Urban Dictionary thing. Do you guys know what uh, QA stands for in the Urban Dictionary? Did yes. we make it? Yes. No. Oh, that'd this be awesome. If we did. Apparently, is okay. So it's quad hairy dude butts. What? Wait, wait, like, wait. Together. What? A QA is four. A QA is four hairy asses together. Wow. Yeah, that's. Hilarious. I thought that, that worked. That perfect. wouldn't work. That wouldn't work with us because Doug's. Uh, yeah, Doug well, has Doug's, zero hair on his. Doug's butt. part of it, so. <laughs> Super Anyways, smooth. Anyways, that was interesting. <laughs> I'm, sa- I'm, I'm concerned. You know that. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody else like told all, me they're like that, the, I, yeah. was, I was searching what qua was and Did then you, it you, sent him down that rabbit that? hole. What you got over there. So there's another urban dictionary one. It says a mass quantity of all things amazing concentrated in one person, place, or thing. For what? It's a qua. Oh, oh. Well that, that's that's that's, that's better. I like that, that one sense. better. That one is I like, better. I like that one. Better. The hairy ass sense. part. I'm not so hairy excited about. Quad asses. <laughs> you know that. Um, <laughs> get four hairy guy asses. <laughs> you got, you, Disgusting. Talking about the kids, you guys got. I forgot that. So I remember I've been telling you guys how like we're now we're at the phase we're at now is that we he's not just repeating us. He's repeating strangers and random people and just and inserting it and just like so perfect timing. I'm always so impressed when he says some of like that. And Katrina's reading to him the other other night. And he goes, Mommy, this is boring. And she's like, what? Where, where did you learn boring? Who told you boring? You don't even know what boring means like that. He's, so, he's picking up all these random words. And when he, ins- and I'd say he's like maybe 50-50 on like when he inserts it. Sometimes it doesn't. It's just even- cute to hear them speak uh, like, like like at try. a higher level yeah. more eloquently. Yeah, that's what it is. It's when so- you see a little kid do that, Aurelius is like, he comes up to me. He's like, do you understand what I'm trying to say? Yeah. Papa? I'm like, what? <laughs> what do you mean, my By the way, you know he will not. No, I don't. He will not stop talking about Max and going to your house. Oh. I want to go to Adam and Katrina's house. I want to play with Max. I'm like, you didn't play with Max. Max just let you play with all his toys. Yeah. <laughs> That's why you like yeah, him so perfect. much. Perfect. <laughs> because yeah, yeah, yeah. Max is just He's literally like, Max is like, here's my toys, and then he leaves, yeah. and Aurelius is like, this is the greatest yeah, kid in the world. Like, We're best, best friends. Ah! Let him play. Yeah, <laughs> let him play with all of his toys. And he's got all kinds of toys that are really Oh, yeah, about. no. Yeah, he's got all the, he's yeah. got too many toys. Dude, man. I got to ask you guys something. I did not know this. Uh, this is, apparently this is true. So, the average pig versus the average American, who has a higher body fat percentage? The average, must be the average American. Yeah. The average American has a higher body fat percentage than the than average pigs. pig. Yeah. What? Yeah. Wow. The average American man is 28% <laughs> body fat. Whereas the average pig is about 16% body fat. Apparently it used to be 20%, but now it's leaner because people like leaner meats. I didn't know that. Wow. Pigs don't look lean to me. No. Yeah, that no. actually that you less about the I mean, obviously it's still not good that we're that we're that fat, but it that's actually not as it's not as bad on the American side as and it's not as lean as I would have thought on the pig side. I yeah. would have thought pigs were way more than 18 or 20 uh, yeah i got it's got to be context right the what would considered lean versus fat on an animal versus a human you know type of deal yeah yeah but that's wild i'm offended it, which brings me to the next thing that just happened you guys hear about uh southwest no oh god really mm. no <sighs> this so makes me annoyed seats, seats but it, it, it doesn't make me annoyed for the reasons people would think i'll tell you what makes me annoyed. Why, what, what's annoying about it so southwest airlines has this policy that now is going viral where 
if you're a passenger of size, this is what they call people now, a passenger of size, <laughs> that they will give you a free seat or a free row to, in, to accommodate for your size. Okay. So this is what Southwest is, is doing right now. Why? Here's, I don't know why. I, I think probably to virtue. I mean, if I they, no as long as they don't discriminate and a six foot three, 240 pound dude could get two seats too. I feel like. Well, that's not fair. Yeah. You know why? You know why it's not fair though? Because people are thinking, well, what's the difference? Who cares? Southwest is giving them. Here's why. Southwest still has to make profits. So how do you think they can afford giving away free seats? They raise, they raise the by fares. by having people who are not passengers of size exactly pay more. Yep, they're going to subsidize the yep. tickets of people who are not passengers of size. I'm going to keep using their stupid term for people who are to make up the difference. So what's the um? That nine percent for a pig is really low. That's low. Pigs are ripped. Yeah, they are. They're more yeah. muscular than I thought. They that's were. that's awesome. So. <laughs> How, how do you? Uh, I'm really curious about this, the Southwest thing. How do you determine if somebody is a, a, a person of size? Is it yeah? Is it obesity or is it being a tall? And, and, and like yeah, like and, yeah. and do I determine that? Like or do they determine so subjective. that? Subjective. Yeah, because we don't. I don't like sitting on a side. I'm not a huge, but I'm six foot two hundred. That's why I said that. And I don't like, feel very comfortable in those chairs. I definitely don't. You don't for no. sure. So mm -hmm. what? Well, how do they? How do how do they decide? Yeah. Do you, uh, do we know? That's, you know? I feel like they're opening themselves up for some lawsuits, don't you? Uh, we, I feel well, like yeah, some tall dude's going to be like, give me some free seats. No. Yeah. yeah. Why not? Is it because I'm you're not, not... You're not fat. Yeah, because I'm not fat or what's Which, the deal? Which, by the way, I think is even worse because the, the six foot eight guy or seven foot guy who's 270 pounds... He didn't eat himself to that. That's right. He can't control that. He's forever going to... Like, there's He's nothing tall. he can do... He ain't going on a diet to get To short. not be six seven. Yeah. Like, that's crazy. If he gets discriminated against. So now why doesn't this apply to like Not roller coasters? So yeah. he, this is oh, how they geez. determine. Oh, let's hear it. Uh, so it, it the armrests are the gauge. Oh. So if you're unable to lower both armrests and or encroach upon any portion of a seat next to you, you need a second seat. So it's not height, it's width. It's how wide you. Uh, are. I mean, I totally encroach on the the seat next to me on the. It's like it, that's one of the things I can't stand. It's like you, if uh, I can't. Bro, can you, can you? We don't fly Southwest because they're not, okay. But if you do, can you? We should do this. We should have you go in. Take a picture. Be like, hey, can I have some free seats next to me because uh, I can't fit? Yeah, and do do does the customer request it? Yes, it's gonna be interesting how this unfolds. Yeah. yeah so it says basically what Doug said about the encroaching is correct. Like if that's what qualifies you, so you can either buy one ticket and then talk to the customer service there at the departure gate, and they will accommodate you and they'll move people around. Or you can purchase two tickets before and then get a refund after for one. Unbelievable. So it's not about, because I thought for a second, well, if there's not a seat that's available, then they can't do it for you. But no, you could buy two, take up that seat, and then get it refunded afterwards. Mm. Holy shit. Yeah, it used to be you had to buy two seats. That is, and what makes me annoyed about this is what, what Southwest is not cutting into the profits to make this happen. Southwest is everybody, the profits are total. So people who don't do this are going to pay more to accommodate people who it's do. It's so this. wild because I, this I, is crazy. I don't even think so. If I, if I qualified for this for being too tall, wide, and everything like that, and that would happen, which is a very good chance that I would, I, st I wouldn't even, I, I still would not want that. Like, I just don't think that's fair. Like, it's like, because I'm I'm a big guy, I got and and again I can't control the my top, my width and height really. You know what I'm saying? Like it's like maybe if I got really really skinny, I can control my width a little bit, but not for the most well, part. Well, is obesity a disability? That's the question. Yeah. This is where this is where it's going. Uh, that that's what. Okay, that's the angle. Okay, I was, I was, like, I was trying to wrap well, my even brain then, around. You don't have they, an assigned seat, so you're gonna have to profess that this is because you know. Like they're gonna have to tell everybody. Well, you can't sit there because the you know they need that. What are they, space? I, I, very rarely that I've ever flown on Southwest has there been extra seats too. So yeah. if yeah. you don't buy the second ticket and you think you're just gonna go up to customer service, how often are you gonna get even be able to get a second? Exactly, seat? Yeah. that's gonna move everybody. Like so, what? So Imagine somebody have else to get off yeah, the plane. Yeah, that'd be hilarious. That's right? what they're gonna run into. <laughs> this is crazy. <laughs> they that, didn't handle this very well. This is crazy. Yeah, this is insane. But yeah, it's if do you consider. It a disability. I guess if the context is it makes you less able to do things, yes. But if the context is that a disability is something you you kind of don't have control. So you over. know the other thing that I always goes through my head when hmm. we when something like this happens too is 
because of the time that we live in of social media, podcasting, clickbait, like how much of the stuff stunts like this are purely just to get this. To look good or to get No, us. to get us talking about it. Yeah. Like now, because there's going to be a whole host of people that are going to think like we do, which is this is bullshit. And they're going to talk all about it. They're going to get the other side that's going to defend it. It, you, and it's going to just get a lot of... So no matter how it ends up playing out, you know, whether they here's, accommodate, look, they don't. It's here, like here's the, the bottom. The publicity they're going to yes. get from doing something like this is massive. I want to be clear, by the way. This is a private company. They could do whatever yeah, they, they want. they can do whatever they want. I they mean, can do whatever they want. I think it's a stupid business I decision. Think, yeah, they're I think up as a customer, problems. it will annoy me to see this because I'm like, I know I'm paying more so this other person... Can get the so this is the, so this that, but I think but they're a private business I, so I don't, I don't get know resentment from and, a lot and, of the and, other and Southwest does pretty damn well. What did we have so a discussion far? about this before? I mean, we think we talked about this with like the uh, uh, Gillette and things like that. Sometimes these stunts, I think, end up working out for. I mean, I don't know if that's a good example because I don't think Gillette it worked out in their favor. But sometimes when they do stuff like this, because they get all the publicity around it, I mean, like that, that old that old adage, right? That you know, well, we are heading, bad publicity is good publicity. We are heading to a point here where a majority of people, if we continue this trend, will be obese. So the minority will be the person who is complaining about this. The majority is going to be everyone else. Yeah. And then what? Right. Well, now the trends gonna, are going. I mean, way, I would yeah. I would argue that we're already there because uh, a majority of people are. I mean, a. a Almost a majority of people are already physically there. And then there's a bunch of people that just agree with that, that aren't there, right? There's there's people that are not obese that agree with the, that uh, obesity is a disease, yeah. right? So there's definitely that. Or so the, what's, so, so let, me just, let me just keep pushing this. You go to a restaurant and there's a standard serving size of a meal. And somebody shows up and says, I'm a person of size. This is not enough to accommodate someone like me. Yeah. It's not fair <laughs> that I pay the same amount as that small person. They're going to go home with leftovers. I need more than this. So you need to accommodate. It sounds crazy, but it's in the same breath yeah, it's, of it's what not, we're talking about. It's not that crazy. I yeah. mean, this is what happens when you you open Pandora's box, right? You you do this and you go down the rabbit hole. You it's eliminate like, personal responsibility. Again, it's a private company, so they'll we'll yeah. see how well this sticks. I just imagine me being a teenager or something, and I'm I'm like putting on extra coats and you know, like all this stuff to like because like you know, you're you're so self centered and thinking like, oh, like I can get away with this, you know. There's always a, a like a way to kind of hack the system. It's like there's going to be, like, people that take advantage of it, it's too. Yes, and you know what's funny? There's there's pro athletes that would qualify for this. There's some big, big people that pay, play professional sports. Sure. they would. I don't think they would ever, they have a different view of how, how big they are because to them it's not, it's, oh, it's a bad thing. It's obviously they became a professional athlete. In fact, if somebody who was trying to become a professional athlete or a wrestler or whatever tried to approach it this way, I bet, you know, they'd probably get a lot of pushback. Well, what do you mean? You're, look how big and strong you are or whatever. It's very interesting. It's a strange. It's a strange, you know, precedent. I, know. I, I had something I wanted to bring out with you guys, but before I do, I wanted. I want to ask you a question about one of our partners. Um, today we have seed, right? Yeah. And I, I one of the things I didn't ask you, and I didn't get a chance to ask Doctor Khan is, while I'm going through this whole process, um, I have a, a protocol afterwards. Like we're doing the the poop pills, and yeah. I've got on the copper stuff, and I think diamond. Uh, thi Thymus and beta, th yeah. is that right? Uh -huh. Like, okay, so I have a whole bunch of things that's on my protocol. What I didn't see on there was a probiotic like seed. Do you think I should not do that because I'm going through a certain protocol, or would it would it be benefit me to do that also, or like? What's I don't your... see how it wouldn't benefit you. Although because yours is so specific, I would just clear it. I would just clear it with with Doctor Khan because okay. it's so specific, and you're doing the. You call it the poop pill. That's the, like the fecal transplant. Oh yeah, type stuff. I forgot you're doing that. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's a that's that's. Okay, that's why another, I don't know. That's yeah. like another level of pro. Isn't it similar in that? Like we're repopulating my gut, right? Very, what, yes, hmm. but totally. Like that's that's a totally like you're looking ahead, x amount of years and, and yeah. I've it, I've actually stopped messing with the seed just because I, I didn't wasn't told to, and I'm like I want to. You know, speaking of probiotics, I just read something interesting. Did you know that? Um, they did this this study and they found that, well, first off, the most popular strains of probiotics that have beneficial effects like lactobacillus, mm -hmm. when they're dead, they don't really elicit much benefit. Then I read another study that showed that anything over 45 degrees Celsius tends to kill these probiotics. And when they're manufactured and shipped, they reach those temperatures. Seed is very different. Seed guarantees you what's in there. It says, so if there's, you know, X amount of billion of this bacteria being alive, they are. 
In fact, you don't have to refrigerate them in order to keep them alive. What is it? Is it the way it's encapsulated? Yep. Is okay. So I yep. Know. yep, it's the whole process that they that they've put together. Um, they're the most advanced when it comes to that. So you, you, you're it's alive. And it gets to the target tissue. Because I used to get the refrigerator ones to try to guarantee that they're alive. When we first met, that's what you would tell yes. me. To do. You're like, when you get the probiotic, make sure you'll get the one that's refrigerated. refrigerated. Yeah, and yeah. then I remember, I don't remember who it was we talked to, and they're like, well, that's better than the other ones, but your body's warmer than the, refri you know, than, than the refrigerator. So when you swallow it, what do you think's happening? Like, oh, crap, you're right. It's not being protected at all. It's getting destroyed in my gut. So seed is totally different in that sense. That's why when people take it they're like oh this, this feels this feels totally different i mean that's probably one of the the biggest things that's different right because a, a lot of the stuff that's in it is similar to other probiotics but it's the fact that you're it's actually, alive and how it gets there yeah 100 percent. so like let's say somebody else's probiotic they're they're you know upregulating you know 40 percent of it or seed you're getting the full you're getting all of it yeah 100 yeah. so right that makes sense. you know we, earlier we were watching i was showing the editing team that rocky four <laughs> uh, montage and Josh had never seen it so great he's a fighter believe... and he's never seen it I how's know. that possible I feel like he's so motivated now because he watched it anyway so <laughs> <laughs> you guys did you guys know Dolph Lundgren so Dolph Lundgren I saw this I watched this interview with Sylvester Stallone recent one so Sylvester Lau is what he's in his 70s he was talking about Dolph Lundgren he goes I hated that guy and they're like why and he goes he was 6'4 handsome muscular martial arts expert, master's degree in chemical engineering. I did not know this. Oh, I didn't know that. Got a scholarship to MIT. Did not yeah. know that. Wow, he was brilliant. He's a brilliant wow. everything. Oh, He's wow. one of those rare people that's like, you got like the where's he at, genetic today? gifts. No so, idea. Oh, yeah. I mean, he he made, he made he came back in those. Because uh, he does look like a god. Like six, like if you looked at him in the 80s, he was like tall, jacked. You know what was Martial artist, like really smart. What was the soldier features. one that he did? I love that one. Oh, uh, oh, is that with Van Damme? Yes. Oh, was, that was a good that was like Street Fighter. Wasn't it? No, 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 something no. Soldier. It was uh, where they were like perfect. They yeah, were like yeah, they genetically were... engineered soldiers or something like that. Yeah, find that oh. one. That was a, oh. that was a classic. Dude. God, I, I haven't watched that, that in a long dude. time. I love that. One. I watched that over Universal and over. Universal Soldier. Again. Yes. Yes. Yeah. What did you say? Universal, Universal soldier. soldier. I think that's right. Yeah. That was it. Yeah, Maybe if that's... someone could pull up the. Uh, the, the photo of it or whatever. I it's, forgot about that movie. Yeah. that's I mean, that's worth a watch. It's been a long time. It's probably terrible, right? Watching it. Like, oh, this is so <laughs> well, bad. Kid, but man. I loved it. I remember watching it over and over. Oh, bro. I, I told you guys I've been watching the Godzilla films with my kid. Yeah, They're dude. so cheesy. They're it's so best. crazy. It's so bad how cheesy they are. Like, I, there's literally a costume. There's one guy. They're all people in costumes. There's this one monster Godzilla fights that's on, on all fours. They didn't even try to make it look like it wasn't a dude. The back legs is literally a dude's legs being bent. <laughs> so he's crawling around. It's so yeah, it's so bad. Uh, it's so bad. Dude, Sylvester Stallone, like, you brought him up. Like, I, you remember that whole rumor about, like, Richard Gere uh, having a gerbil? Oh, like, God. Being in a gerbiling? I don't know. <laughs> that. You never heard that? No, no. He, that's, like, a, that's, a, that's before the internet, So too. Richard Gere, like, blames uh, uh, Sylvester Stallone. For passing like, that around? One passing around that. Oh, oh yeah. there's Universal Soldier. Yes. Yeah. Because 2012. my wife is still convinced that that was real. Like that, Richard Gere was into that kind of stuff. I have no idea what you guys are talking about. You don't know about the gerbil. No. Gerbil. He had a verbal. Come okay, on. he put a a verbal Sorry, gerbil. Doug. He put a gerbil gerbil up his butt. Up his butt. Up his butt. And and then the gerbil died, and he had to get, had to go to the hospital and pull it what out. What a weird thing. It to was do. on like, <laughs> and it, dude, it was on mainstream news. It was not like I feel like, yes. I, no, I feel like it? yes. I feel like that was like trolling before trolling was. Yeah. A so do I. I feel like it's an urban legend. Yeah, yeah. it was, and like, then it, it caught steam, and then everybody just like. So it was in the news that it was an urban legend, or that it happened. Uh, no, that it happened. Then they all were like, you know, had to like, Doug, I, that's Doug, like, I feel like that's like, you like reconcile look at Richard it. Gear and gerbil. Yeah. I've been trying to like pin this out because it is an urban not. legend, but like, don't click on images, please. I feel like that's like <laughs> a disgruntled, like client friend or so, somebody that's mad at you puts out a rumor like that. I feel that's like absurd. if you're a, a super, yes, well, that's why I, that, it was interesting. I'm like, why did he, he pin that on Sylvester Stallone is the one that, that started the rumor. That's, you know what's funny? You could only do that. Oh, about, he, he said about he celebrities. started. It. He said Richard Gere said he he started that. He blamed uh, Sylvester Stallone. Wow. For that. Yeah. That's okay. I was so, like, what? I feel like you could only do that about celebrities because if you made that up about someone else, people are like shut up. But yeah. If you say it's about some celebrity, that's like way at the top. But that's like stuck. I you know, saw. Forever I saw an Instagram reel. Maybe Doug can confirm this is a little hold bit. Hold on. I'm first, okay, I'm well, <laughs> so it's probably ur urban legend. There's nothing to verify it. What do you say? What does it say? Of course. I mean, yeah, Stallone is uh, implicated in starting this somehow. Hey, what a. What but a I don't great, know if it's true or not. What a great like prank. 
You know, they, like they make it, up a bullshit. it's so specific, you know, and it's like so taboo and bizarre that like it, it went like gangbusters. Everybody's like, "Oh, did you hear about Richard Gear?" You know, oh. and so it became a thing. So, so t- t- talk about pranks, okay, and things like screwing people or getting people over like this. I thought this was a really interesting reel I saw. Doug, what's it um, when we ha- when we do like um, when we do like small transaction business stuff where like we hire a contractor or something like that? What is the thing that we? What's the what, ten? Is it a ten ninety that we send? Ten ninety nine. Ten ninety nine is what we send them to. Yeah. To, yeah. Which, so I thought this was really cool, I, and I, maybe you know if this works or not. Uh, if you've ever had somebody who's kind of fucked you over and not paid you back or not given you money or oh. like that or screwed like that, is issue them a ten ninety nine. And he says, what that does is it triggers the IRS that they did work for you and, and whatever that, and that, and then just let it go. Just issue them a 1099, let it go, and that it'll trigger the IRS to see where the, they should be getting taxes from that person. And if they don't get taxes attached to that person, then they'll then they'll do an audit. Oh, that's of nasty. Yeah, first off, that's really dirty. Yeah. Okay. Well, so don't do that. You over. Yeah. Well, even so. But here's the other thing, though. Maybe it will go back to you. It will. Because if you haven't reported that- on your return, obviously it would be an expense, so that wouldn't be such a big thing. But I mean, I, I, it could be traced back. I well, would not use does. the IRS. I would not use the IRS in a prank. Like, why would you want to mess? <laughs> I with mean, that? yeah, I mean, well, I think that's pretty cruel thing to do. On you. Honestly, totally. I mean, oh, but I'm, obviously, if your enemy, I guess, yeah, you that's, do a, that's that. I like the, the parking ticket one the best. All right, that's so my favorite one. Adam, oh, you leave the car in there. You rent a car in your friend's name or something. What was it? Like you, you yeah, yeah, no, you buy a car. You buy a car in someone's name. So you buy like a beater. Like you buy like, like, that's like right, a piece of shit. Yeah, under piece of shit that doesn't even run or whatever. You go park it somewhere. Park at the airport and you leave it at the airport. They get billed. Yeah, yeah, they just get you get billed ran up on them like crazy. Did you ever? Did you ever see that guy? I think I talked about a long time ago. That guy who. He made his last uh, alimony payment to his wife, and he showed up and made it in pennies. Well, you know my story. Like <laughs> he that, rolled yeah. up, he backed up a truck and jumped like just I remember that. thousands of pennies. That happened with um, what was that? Yeah, was this a Spotify thing? There was a you there was be a, in a real dark place. There was that. a deal, there. yeah, dude, because <laughs> he had to go out and get all those pennies. He went pretty beep, far. Beep, and just I mean, I did the right same on thing, the driveway. Right? Know that story. Um, so I got a little bit more information about the gear Stallone. Oh, oh, good. Okay. Yes, here, please here, here, here. Here. solve this for me. So I was literally this, trying to figure this out. This is why Richard Gere thinks it was Stallone. So it was in 1974. They were on the set of Lords of Flatbush, both mm. of them. And apparently they got in some kind of a fight and the tension got so high that uh, Gear got kicked off the film, which still angers him. And so apparently he thought Stallone started that because I think it was around that time. The uh, the gerbil story went out there. So oh, anyway, wow, the Stallone it. claims he did not. So what a random thing. I know that is so weird. You hear that thing about gear? What? What do you do? I, I mean, mean, South Park made a whole <laughs> like episode. They, oh, they did <laughs> the little gerbil. Like, yeah. I was like, dude. I feel like there there has to be like some sort of validity to it for it to even take mm-hmm. legs. Right, yeah. like there had to be like a gerbil on set, or someone found somebody. Out that he, yeah, you know, like he, he had knew gerbils. this was a weird thing that, like, yeah. you know, only fringe people were into. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, there's got to be something like, like, well, you know what? He did own a bunch of gerbils. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And we, you know, what I'm saying like, there's got to be somebody yeah, who can yeah. validate part. They of did the, disappear. Yeah, yeah. He's buying one a month. Yeah, like, how does that stick? That's so bizarre. Yeah. I, I had it kind of an off. Uh, topic type of conversation I wanted to have with you guys. Um not even sure if this is the, the, the right time to insert this, but I it was on my mind. I wanted to bring it up. And, okay. Right after gerbils. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think that's a great transition. I apologize. <laughs> Sorry guys, I'm gonna insert something. Yeah, yeah. 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 Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> so I'm I'm listening to um our buddy Chris Williamson uh interview uh Scott Galloway. And they're talking about the um Caleb Williams, who is the quarterback of uh USC so I think it was a, a month ago or so, r- 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 roughly. G- Caleb Williams is the quarterback for USC. I don't follow college sports at all or very little, but I know a little bit about this story and him. And he had all these super high expectations to be the Heisman winner. And like USC was supposed to go to one of the bowl games. And like he's super talented, obviously awesome if he has all those expectations. And they had a loss, and I think it was like their second or third loss of the season, which probably knocks him out of the running for a Heisman and maybe even a, a bowl game. So it was like a big deal. 
And right after the loss of the game, like he breaks down, he runs like straight after the after the whistle, runs straight into the audience, jumps up, grabs his mom, and you can see him just sobbing. Mm -hmm. His mom covers like with a binder over his helmet so people can't see, but you can just see the way he's he's crying so hard. Mm -hmm. Scott Galloway brings it up and he talks about how much he thinks that moves he moved society in the right direction with masculinity that. You know, you hear you have this guy that all, that all these kids look up to because he's a badass in football and stuff like that. And a moment on television, they, they see this and he mm. breaks down and he cries. So it's caused a big divide of people that mm. are, um, you know, oh, he's soft. And then yeah. you have the other people that are like, man, that's that shows you how much he cared and he's vulnerable and things like that. And so Scott Galloway's talking about the vulnerability side and how important that was. And it sparked this thought for me, like, you know, that's interesting because um, I don't disagree that vulnerability is 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 very important. I think men um, have a tough time sharing their feelings about that. I, I think that it, it should be okay for a man to be able to cry, all those things. But then I also think that, you know, we also lack a lot of stoicism in yes. our, our society and that men are getting weaker and we talk mm -hmm. all about that. And I wanted to ask you guys, do you think uh, men, we lack vulnerability or stoicism more and which one is the the lack These days, of stoicism huh stoicism all yeah. day i i always see is uh well i mean i i'm i might be alone on a lonely island here these days uh but i i mean the whole push and drive for everybody to share their feelings and uh show themselves crying and show themselves like at this moment of of despair um what you know for me like it, in in terms of like how i i think it's important it's important to share like that amongst your spouse amongst your kids but like the whole world and the public display and like uh, to me i just think it's over overdone these days so yeah. I, I i prefer i prefer to see you know a lot of that in, under control and you know and especially in that kind of a setting where it's like you're playing a game and there's high stakes and you know and this happened when i played and there was guys that like cried after we lost a humongous game and it was like emotional and it's it's a very emotional moment you know uh but to just have a, a you know total breakdown um I, I think it's like I think let that happen, but like, why are we per, like, why are we zooming in so much on that? Like, let him have his his thing with his mom. Like, it, this isn't a public discussion uh, to me. Like, well, that was already being filmed, so that's tough. I, I hear what you're saying. It's like someone's crying. Like a film this. Yeah, like I just uh, we're we're just like I, oh, let's, I knew let's, I knew this would be an interesting up. conversation because See, I don't think they're independent. I don't think that they're. It's either or. Okay, so what what is vulnerability? Real vulnerability is is courage. It is not weakness. But there's actual, there's weakness, which is fear-based, which is not real vulnerability. So like real vulnerability would be like, uh, you know, me and you are going to get in a fight, okay? And you got all this armor on and I take my armor off and I say, let's go. You're going to look at me and think I'm weak? No, I made myself more vulnerable. Mm -hmm. That means I'm stronger. Uh, not, I learned this more recently, not allowing yourself to feel things isn't strength, that's fear. It's running away. Oh, I can't feel that. Let me just avoid that. Let me. So I don't think they're both the same. I think weakness is you can weakness is is can is not vulnerability and nor is it stoicism. Weakness is like crying and complaining and whining mm -hmm. and you know uh, poor me and everybody look at me and look at my attention. It's just kind of like that's right. very different. Look, if some if you see somebody you see an athlete break his leg. And he cries because of the pain, or he cries because now he can't play professional football. Which one feels strong? Yeah. Right? Not because of the pain. It's because, oh, I can't play it's pro football. It's because he can't, yeah. That's totally different. It's understandable. Totally different. Yeah. So I don't think they're either one. I don't think it's either one. Yeah, I think by the way, right. what we see now. It, it, it's more of a, if he was projecting it like it was a display. Yeah. You know, like I think that was yes. what I was trying to convey. So, no, well, I know. So let me let me back up a little bit or back, up, back you up, Justin, a little bit worth where you're going because I don't think you're you're wrong either i think that so in this isolated incident it's to me it's less about him and what he yeah. what he did it's it more about the conversation yeah what we, so what i really think yeah. it's more about and what it what it highlighted for me is actually how wrong as a society we're getting it on the left and the right yeah i feel like uh like there there's like this is turned off like everything today has turned into like a political thing like you have the and in scott galloway by the way is like a, a ardent left 
you know, left leaning type of uh, you know, character. Mm-hmm. Like, and he openly talks about his his politics and where he is. I would say that Chris is more of a right leaning, so he's more of the stoic. And so you have like, I, I love that they they had this conversation, and I just think that the the right. Uh, what demonizes that the crying of that and it's weak and it's soft and then and then the left do the toxic side ce- celebrates yeah, that yeah. it's like vulnerable and stoicism is toxic masculinity and it's like that I think we're both failing society by making it so black or white to yeah. now to your point where I agree it's the, it's a little more gray than that like I don't mm. no real don't, real courage yeah. is facing the 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 fear and the and the anxiety and the sadness. And then not letting it rule you. Yeah. Okay. That's strength. Fear is either it rules you, ah, and now I'm like frozen and I can't do anything, or it's avoiding it mm-hmm. and shutting off, mm-hmm. which is, you know, what you would say the toxic side of stoicism what, what would be. I don't think there is a toxic side, but because th- that's not real stoicism, but the toxic displays that we see. It's like this it's like uh, you got two guys in a bar, they both get in an argument. Okay. One guy waits outside for the other guy to come out. And when the guy's not looking, sucker punches him. Mm-hmm. That's weak. weak. You are weak. Yeah. yeah, you hit the guy, but you're weak. You're actually yeah, a weak you, person. You have no a t- honor. A real, str- yes, a real strong guy would say, hey, look, let's go outside one-on-one. If someone hits the ground, the other person stops. Yeah, That's that's strength, right? That's different. So I think what we're seeing, it's like masculinity. Like they say, all, all you know, toxic masculinity. No, it's a, it's, it's a lack of masculinity. It's all these young men without fathers. Yeah who think they have to emulate what social media and what media shows them that men are, which is what? Bang a bunch of chicks, you know, make a bunch of money, uh, you know, braggadocious, you know, whatever. That's not real, like, that's not real masculine. If you had a father, he would tell you, stop showboating. How many dads mm-hmm. of athletes, when their kid makes a touchdown or whatever, and the kid goes around, like, shoves it in someone else's yeah, face, a dad goes up chest. to him, what are you doing? Don't yeah. showboat like that. Did you guys see the documentary? That's, that'll be my shout out today, if, if we don't okay. have one, is the Barry Sanders documentary. Mm. Along oh. those lines, oh, that's sweet. one of the things that he was known for and was just so unique about him was like, you know, and his dad always taught them, act like you've been there before. Yeah. yeah. And so he would not celebrate. Like he yeah. would, like he was, see, if you watch all the clips, you watch documentaries, a great documentary. Every time he, and he would just break off this crazy run that you just see Dude. nobody else do before. And then he runs a touchdown. He just walks over and he hands the the, the ref the ball, then goes right back to the yeah. No uh, celebrating, pumping arms, dancing, doing photo, fake photos for the camp. Like just, yeah. that's how he, that's how he played. That's, I, I learned that in judo as a so, kid. So that's very stoic. When I learned that, so I went to an old judo school here in San Jose when I was a kid. San Jose Buddhist Judo Club, shout out. They've been around forever. And I remember if you won a match and you cheered and jumped up and down or whatever, disqualified. Oh, I'll disqualify. disqualified. If you win and you go, yes, okay, they'll let you a little bit, but really what you need to do is win, get up, bow, show respect, and you're done. I remember it was such a valuable lesson for me. Well, it's the whole Jordan Peterson thing. Yeah. You know, it's like you, you want people to continue to play with you. You know, like you're going to be that guy that like shoves it in the person's face uh, every time you make a play. Like you're you're an asshole. Like yeah. in, in, in at some point, like – like you're going to be off on uh, all alone. Even your teammates aren't going to want to play with you. You know, so at that point, you have to be look, a, a good athlete, a good representation of of you know a, a game player. Look, real men know it when they see it. Like I've been around guys like this. I've been around men who pro MMA fighters, the black belts in jujitsu, boxers, like dudes that could legitimately beat the crap out of ninety nine point nine percent of the people out there. And I was out with one of them. I've told you guys this before. And a dude was really poking at him and starting shit and whatever because he recognized it. And so you're probably going to get some shit. And I remember my buddy just like, hey, man, listen, call. And he bought him a drink. I had way more respect for him than I would have had he like kicked the guy's ass because he could have very, he could have kicked his ass with one hand yeah. while, while not spilling his drink. Right. But instead, what he did was is he bought him a drink. With, and I remember thinking, like, wow, what a, what a class act. Like, that is a, that is a awesome dude. Same thing, like, when you got a, you got a buddy who let's say he's married or he's devoted to his wife, but all these women come after him and he's loyal to his wife. Any man will tell you that they'll respect that guy over the guy that ends up sleeping around with everybody. Which, But see, media yeah, You've controlled the opposite. your impulses. So you're not an animal. That's it. I mean, I think that's really, if you want to sum it up to one thing, it's like, you know, being able to have that kind of like reserve and in, in control, like, you know, over like just reacting my emotionally. Uh, and so if it is an honest, authentic, emotional moment, you know, like... 
that's I'm not demonizing that, you know, there's, there's, yeah. there's points of pain and there's, there's, there's things that like, you know, grant and warrant, you know, crying and, and, and really like, you know, feeling that feeling like that's, I'm not, I'm not like coming down, especially when somebody like has, you know, a huge game like that. Like I felt that, you know, I've had it like, and I'm fighting it back, you know, yeah. cause I'm that asshole. that's like, I don't want to show it to anybody, you know? <laughs> and so like, I'm, you know, I, I don't feel like it's my place to judge that on him. But at the same time, what I do judge is like these videos. Like, I don't know if you've seen the one with the Starbucks employee that's just like, you know, there's there was only four of us today. And he like locked himself in the storage room by himself, put him on self on camera to and the puts world, it puts it out there and starts crying and hysterically oh, about how hard his job is and like how the <laughs> world's against on, him man. and how everybody like how they set him up for failure. And it's like, what are you doing? Yeah, yeah. What What is this? That's a weak narcissist is what it is. Let me post this on social well, media. Well, I, I think the, the thing, that situation, the Caleb Williams situation, uh, the thing that I think is, is is the worst is that I think the rest of us are getting it so wrong. Forget about that exact. Yeah, yeah you're right. That exact situation, you yeah. know? Because for all we know, too, even like, let's use that extreme Starbucks. Who knows what else was going on in that kid's life? Yeah. Like, maybe his, his mom died Yeah, but yesterday. why film it and post it on social I, media? But... but but it's the it's the conversation that has yeah. the, the defending of it, like oh it's, he's being vulnerable, he should do that, and then the other side is being like oh my god he's a pussy, why does he do that? It's like I feel like both sides are getting it so wrong. Yeah. I feel like both yeah. sides are not helping it because it's like you can you can be stoic and you can also be a man that cries, yeah. like and you can be vulnerable, like you can look you can be all of those and one reaction or action that you take is does not define who you my, are. My grandfather who passed away recently, one of the toughest men I ever met in my entire life, had a really hard life growing up, like really hard, not knowing if he had an, another meal, you know, 10 years old, had to go off, leave town, go God knows where to try to bring food home. And like a really, really tough life. Okay. You know, immigrated to this country, you know, other places. There isn't a single event of his grandchildren that he went to where he didn't cry. We, it would, it was a joke. I talked, I talked about it with my cousins at his funeral. Like you could always see no, no in the back. And it didn't matter what recital it was. It could be first grade. It could be second grade. It could be high school. It could be this big thing. It could be a little thing. It could be a kid. One of, them, one of his grandkids drew him a picture. And you'd always see my grandfather sit there, and he'd always lift his glasses and wipe his tears. And he would, did I, was he weak? No, he was the last, <laughs> last, week, last person I would ever, you know, call weak. So yeah, 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 anyway, yeah. I was going to ask you about, so all your treatments, all stuff, are you also using the Caldera still on your psoriasis? So are you still doing all the... Now that, so, and they, they told me it would get to this, this phase. Um, so the initial treatment, I was blown away by already what I was starting to see happen with the psoriasis. She actually even told me when she says like, you know, don't get overly excited because you, you're, you still go through like a scabbing and healing process. Okay. I am, I'm stabbing you 50 times in each one yeah. of these spots. Yeah. So you're going to, you're going to scab over and heal. So I am I I'm at this point this peak right now where uh, it is starting to scab over and so I'm back to I wasn't using anything cal I wasn't using anything literally just to the treatment and I've been sitting back watching what's going on and paying attention to like how I feel and what what I see and in the last two days I've started to notice it like starting to scab over and so that really helps keep it from getting like really yeah. dry and scabby you know but, the the market for men's skincare um, exploded it, because of Caldera. I, are you watching the ads mm -hmm. on, with Caldera ads? They're, I, I, don't, I don't know how they did it. Well, it's got to be the product, the way the bottle looks. I'm not sure. Maybe the right timing combination. Of the, but like m like comments underneath it for men about using the skin oil. Uh, it's insane. It's it's crazy. That's a market that, you know how many times, <laughs> you know how many times makeup be, companies it, and stuff have been trying to take get the male market and just been rejected? Yeah. And Caldera has really made a huge impact. Yeah, that, that would be, I'd be really interested to see some, hmm. some more data on what you're talking about. I like, I, I, I wonder what, what I, obviously it's super effective. So that has to be half of it. Cause I think, um, just I also like, think it's representatives I, cause they got, they went to podcasts, they went athletes, they went like, yeah, they went to they masculine, the right people. Yeah, yeah. They have a lot of masculine characters, whatever that are doing that. Right. I'm, obviously that helps. Right. I mean, advertising marketing is, is, but it doesn't matter though, because if I get advertised to and marketed to really well, that might get me initially to try something But then you want and to try it. something like, like, taking care of your, like, I mean, look at like Justin, right? We joke about all the time how he's just like, I don't do none of that shit. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like <laughs> rub some dirt on it. You know what I'm saying? Like that's like, yeah. so, uh, that, and, a, and a lot of guys identify with that. I even kind of identify with that yet. I'm open to like, okay, I'll try this and see. But if it didn't 
have a profound effect. Yeah, that's true. It wouldn't be enough for me to keep doing it. Like right. the, uh, the yeah, thing, if it didn't work, I would be like, oh, yeah, because yeah, I'm already. It. If there's, you know, being honest, there's a little bit of hesitancy. Like, okay, I'm not gonna get into this like face routine like my wife does like every it's like night. Six like, different bottles. Yeah, like, like this is ridiculous. I tease her all the time about how ridiculous all yeah. this stuff is in her counters there's and in her showers. And yeah, yeah, yeah. So. But, you know, when you, you apply it and you see it and you actually see how effective it is, I was like, okay, I'm, okay, I'm, I'm bought in a little bit. <laughs> yeah, see, somehow they, they bypassed the whole metrosexual thing. Like, that was a big thing That's back right. in the day, right? That was like, you're only metrosexual if you, you take care of yourself. Yeah, yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which is silly because it's like you're just taking care of yourself. But if you go to the extreme where you're doing all the beauty stuff as a dude and yeah. that might be south south point i'll never forget i saw a ted talk that i thought was really good and they they listed like the the, the five most impactful or powerful things that uh that determines if a business is going to be successful and number one is timing oh right timing of a market of course yep. and and, yep. and they and give course. examples of like even a even a crummy product at the right time sometimes could out outperform a superior product at poor timing you yep. know i just got interviewed this totally. morning by uh the wall street journal which uh sounds kind of cool I, I mean it's an old pub publication but i was like, oh, yeah, i didn't even ask in you in the 90s that would be like the yeah big, i don't know if it really anything these days. but anyway i got interviewed by them and they were asking me about fitness gadgets and trends and the first thing i said was strength training i said we're seeing a massive upswing in the interest in strength training especially among women big box gyms already identified this about a year or two ago they're changing the footprint they're building bigger free weight areas, smaller cardio areas. I said, you know, Dr. Gabriel Lyons' book came out. Mine came out. Like more and more people are talking about strength training. And I think 2024 is going to be highlight. That's going to highlight. It's what's going to highlight it. It's going to be a lot about strength training. And the yeah. female market's driving it. You're seeing Let's more just women build than ever. Muscle. Yeah. What, was, uh, what was that like? I didn't even get a chance to ask you. That, was that was it. I talked about that. I talked about uh, red light therapy, uh, continual glucose monitors, devices that help you improve your sleep. So that was pretty much it. She was looking for like 2024. I think it's probably going to be an article. Yeah. Like, They're very know, gadget yeah. Uh, heavy, huh? Yeah, yeah their yeah, thoughts. Yeah. I mean, did you like it? Did you think? Did you... It was cool. It was just a phone interview. So yeah. she was just taking notes. It's so funny. We were talking off air before you did it, uh, and, you know, and you were telling family and stuff like that. Like, you know, outside people or family, my family's like this too. Like when I tell them about like either a guest or like an article that shared mm -hmm. us and it's like, dude, People still think like the oh, like Forbes, I, the Wall Street Journal. If I was on the yeah, cover these, these of legacy media, thing, I don't know how many outlets. newspapers still exist, right? But if I was on the cover of a newspaper that still existed, my parents would think I've made it yeah. right now because yeah. of what newspapers meant back then. Yes. When now they mean absolutely nothing. <laughs> yeah. They don't mean anything. I know. That's what's funny. We're, we could have somebody like say like, uh, you know, uh, I don't know, Joe DeFranco or a Jordan Harbinger or like a friend of ours that, that mentions us on a podcast of theirs, which is massive. And yeah. that's a bigger deal than like getting into Forbes or Wall Street. Yeah, yeah, but it's yeah. like it's so distorted still because they still have that Media shifting a lot. It is. It, wow. and, it, and I wonder how long it will take before – that becomes like the norm where someone's like, oh, big deal, you're on for, oh, but so-and-so talked about you on their Instagram or yeah. so, you know yeah, what I'm saying? <laughs> like that's yeah. that's a bigger deal. I mean, yeah. when you talk about moving the needle business-wise, it's so interesting yeah. how much that's Speaking of business, you you brought up Bye Bye Barry as a documentary for sure. Yes, okay. yes. I wanted to mention our Train the Trainer series coming up in January because we are a pro we're over 4,000 people now signed up to Ew. watch this thing live. Um, it's still open as of right now, so you could still sign up and it's a three day training course where I'm talking to coaches and trainers, how to be more successful. It's at mindpumptrainer.com. Um, and I would love to see that double. I would love to see that number double and have people just, just, and what's going to be cool about it is that people will be asking questions. You guys are going to be on there interacting. Oh, yeah. And just we'll get see, a lot of value out of it. The, the goal is to have over 5,000 show up. I'm guessing we're going to need seven to 8,000 signed to up for a 5,000 show. That would be my guess. That'd be rad. And for those that are wondering, oh, what day, what time? And listen, get in there, get registered. We have all those things, right? But even if you can't make it- There's gonna be a replay. Right? Yeah, you'll be able to replay it. So if you if you register, if you don't register, you won't be able to do that. But if you register, 
then you'll be able to get the replay even if you don't make it. If you make it live, then you'll actually get the interaction with us why, why Sal is going through it, but it's absolutely free. Even if you're not a trainer, but you're aspiring to be a trainer, right? You're thinking about doing it, something you want to do. This would be extremely valuable for you to come in. So all your all your gym owners, if you own small franchise, anything in the health anything in the health space too. So not even just personal trainers. I'd, I'd even put Kairos in there, PTs in that's there. Right. Like I mean, anybody like that's going to benefit uh, from this conversation. So get in there. Multivitamins are great, but children's multivitamins are just glorified candy. Well, not Haya. Haya Health makes multivitamins for kids that aren't packed with sugar. They're not essentially candy, and they have adequate nutrients for your children's developing needs. Go check them out and get a discount. Go to HayaHealth.com. That's H-I-Y-A Health.com forward slash mind pump. And with that code or with that link, you'll get 50% off. All right, back to the show. Our first caller is Amber from Georgia. Hi, Amber. How can we help you? Hi. It's nice to meet you guys. I've been listening for a couple of years. I'm very excited and very nervous. <laughs> oh, awesome. Right. We'll help you. We'll help you. What's going on? I, um, I've been having this problem uh, really for about two years now where when I try to cut, I kind of have this like crashing. Uh, I, that's the only thing I know to call it. I'll read my email. But I said I experience like hunger that wakes me up in the middle of the night and I can't go back to sleep unless I eat something. I have trouble falling asleep. I have these crazy food cravings. They leads to like binging. I'm bloated. And my period also ends up coming late. So in a cut, I eat about 1600 calories and I track my macros. So 120 grams of protein and then carbs and fats kind of fall wherever they fall. I run about 12 miles a week, strength train two to three days a week. I get 12,000 steps a day. I get seven hours of sleep at least if I can sleep. And I've tried like pushing through and end up just getting worse and worse and worse <clears throat> until I get out of control and have to stop. I'm 5'2 and I weigh 155 pounds. Okay. Um, so I really want to lean out and I want to look like I work out and I just am really struggling. <laughs> Have you, so you said every time you try to do this, this is what you experience. So this isn't the first time you've experienced this. No. And this, this has been going on for two years. So I've always struggled with my weight. I, um, I was obese as a teenager and was really on a roller coaster till about 10 years ago. I started tracking macros and working out. And for a long time, I was able to maintain my weight and didn't have these problems. But now I, now, over the last two years, I've had these problems. I put on some weight when I had my son five years ago, and okay. I have not been able to get it all off since okay. then. Why do you Why do you run? Why the run? I I enjoy it. I I, I hear what y'all say a lot of times for people that I feel like are going through similar things to me, and I've, I've I have like ADHD, and so I feel like it really helps calm my brain down and helps me just be better throughout the rest of the day if I get a run in. Why not something else? Why the running? Uh, it's easier. I live out in the country, and it's it gets me out of the house. I get outside. I don't have a really good place to cycle or anything like that. I don't enjoy yoga. It's just too slow. Um, I just, I don't know. I guess I've just always done it. If the running didn't burn any calories, or let's say the running was making you gain body fat, would you still want to do it? I... Uh, I don't know because I do acknowledge that it burns calories. Yeah. I, I and don't I do take that up. Okay. But I, I think I you know. chose running because of its attachment to the calorie burn and it's a yeah. form of exercise. And then what ends up happening, and this is very common, Amber. By the way, everything you said mm -hmm. that you experience and the fact that you've experienced it before, otherwise, I would ask you more questions because there could be other things that could be happening. But because you've experienced this before, I'm pretty, I'm pretty certain that I know what the issue is. Now let's talk okay. about the running. Let's talk about the running for a second, okay? Okay. What happens with with for a lot of us, this happens to me too, just with a, with different stuff. Yeah. Is that we will do things that um, that help us deal with an insecurity. Let's say for me, it's the opposite. So for me, it's lifting weights or taking supplements. For someone else, yeah. it may be that they were heavy, and so they they always kind of struggled with that. So they tend to to choose things that are uh, can help that. And then what happens is they justify it 
by saying things like, oh, it <clears throat> helps my mental state or it's good for me or I get to go outside. I don't think you really like running. I think you I think you're afraid of gaining weight. I and, am afraid of I mean yeah. I'm hundred afraid of gaining weight. So all of your symptoms are it's literally like the perfect it's it's like you gave me the answer and I know what the problem is. So it's like if you said the answer is four, what's the what's the question? I could easily say, Well, it's one plus three or two plus two, like right. it's a four plus zero. Like there's your the an the, the everything you're experiencing is telling me you're doing too much and eating too little. For what you're doing, okay. so I don't know what the rest of your life is, but okay. you're, you've overwhelmed your body with stress, and the running <laughs> is serving you nothing positive at all. Now, if you want to get out of the house and get a break, um, you could do it by doing a slow walk for the yeah. same time it takes you to do that run. So, however long it takes you to run uh, okay. in the morning, you could do a slow walk. Uh, you could sit outside, uh, read a book, something like that, just get out of the house, whatever. But the okay. running, is, is that would be the first, that's the easiest thing to cut because based on what your goals are, it's not helping you at all. Um, it's just adding more stress. So what I would have you do if you were my client is I would have you uh, increase your calories a little bit. I'd have you cut the running out completely. And then I would have you uh, lift weights about two to three days a week. Tell me about the lifting, though. How, what's your lifting look like right now? Are you following one of our programs? I'm not. I, I've been working out in my garage. I live in a small town, and I just found a gym that has child care. I plan on joining in the next few weeks. Um, but I've been working out in my garage with, like, I had up to 20-pound set of dumbbells. So I've just been doing, like, some strength training, squats, deadlifts, of bicep curls, things like that off of that. What do your rest periods look like? Do you rest or do you do it kind of circuit style? I rest. I, I learned from listening to y'all not to do it circuit style and high speed, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think we're going to Sal's advice plus actually getting into, if you only have up to 20 pounds, I think you're going to really benefit from some like serious strength training. You've probably gotten pretty adapted to the weights that yes, you have, I have, and it's time to progress to some some good weight. I think actually feeding your body, giving yourself uh, more calories, less of n none of the running, going to walking, and then a true you know strength training protocol like a MAPS anabolic program. Yeah. I think you would do wonderful. Yeah, all of your symptoms are are stress symptoms. So uh, period changes in your menstrual cycle, very clear. Typical right. sign that either there's a nutrient deficiency, illness, or your body's overwhelmed by stress. Because this has happened to you before, I don't think it's the first two. Okay, I could be wrong, but because you've, you've experienced this each time you've tried to go on a cut, your yeah. body's overwhelmed by stress. So, so you get menstrual changes, uh, bloated. Okay, digestive system also gets affected uh, by increased inflammation and changes in the microbiota, which can cause things like bloating, constipation diarrhea, um, intense food cravings. When your body, you know, keep in mind our bodies evolved for the most part uh, with scarcity. And one mm -hmm. of the, there's two main causes of, of stress that we would uh, encounter for most of human history. One of them is danger. I'm going to get eaten or killed, okay, or something like that. And the second one is not having enough food. And so right. what your body does when it thinks, when you're under a lot of stress, it kicks up hunger because one of the best insurances against scarcity is body fat. If you're, uh, if you have a lot of body fat on your body and you're not going to eat for the next two months, you're going to be better off than the person next to you that's lean. Okay. So it'll kick up food cravings and they're not going to feel like normal hunger. So let me, let me explain something to you. Do you let me know if this is what it feels like? Okay. There's hunger and then there's the cravings where it's like, uh, you can't get it out of your head. And, you, and it's like, I got it. It's like overwhelming. And you get an overwhelming craving for uh, either high calorie. Yeah, foods. high calorie, Normally carbohydrate, sugar. sugar type or sugary type of foods, that hyper palatability that you're really, really craving. And it's like, if it's, if it's there, it's going to happen. I'm going to eat it or I have to like fight it this entire time. That's what that feels like. Is that what you're feeling? Yeah. Okay. That's exactly. Feeling. I got where I don't keep stuff in the house because I'm afraid that'll come and I won't like it's, and it usually hits the worst in the middle of the night yeah when I know I eat it I can go back to sleep and um so I'll get up and just eat whatever I want <laughs> yeah tell me about the rest of your life do you work what's the rest of your life look like 
part time. I'm a stay at home mom though. I homeschool my five year old son, um, and I I don't I don't sit a lot. I like to be up busy moving around. If there's nothing to do, I'll make up something to do. I garden things like that. Okay. Do you have any? Do you have a lot of things you do on your own, like uh, like time outside the house just for you, hang out with your friends, go do no, something just for you? Okay. Just thing, really. I yeah. think that's why like such a lifeline. Yep. 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 Your 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 body's overwhelmed. So it's it's, yeah. o- it's overwhelmed by stress. I'm well, my ex- our expertise is fitness. So I'm gonna tell you to cut the running out. But okay. if you were if you were a close friend of mine, I would also say to add activities or things that you could do by yourself to get out okay. of the house and go do something just with on your own or with friends. Yeah, with friends yeah. is yeah. what I mean. Yeah, yeah. Like just not when I say by yourself, I don't mean like take your kid with you. Yeah. I mean right. like you know, kid stays at home with dad or you got nanny or mom. And you go do yeah. something on your own because, uh, str- you know, that's also recuperative for a mom who who homeschools. Is that, you, you probably get almost no time to yourself. And so that, right. that'll that wear on you as well. But Did, did I hear you say you're going to get a gym membership? There's well, Didn't you say something along those yeah, lines? Daycare, right? Yeah. In January, I plan on joining. I've um finishing up with working out with my friend. She comes and works out with me a little bit. But I've told her. <laughs> Where I'm joining a gym. They have childcare, so I would be able to either go without my son, or if I have to take him, he would be able to go too. So I would, I would love to see you follow Maps Anabolic. If your friend is going to work out with you too, reach out to us. I'll send it to her for free, also, so the both of you can have Maps Anabolic and go through that process together. I think okay. that in in combination to the the tips that Sal's giving you right now, I think we're going to start to see a difference. The one last thing we didn't dive deep in because I see that you actually wrote on here you're yeah. getting your protein intake. What what mm-hmm. does like when you're when you are eating good, are you like a balance of carbs, fats, you're not following anything radical or doing anything outside the norm other than restricting calories? Where are you getting your protein from? Uh, mostly, mostly chicken. I do eat some beef, but beef doesn't sit good on my stomach and I don't like fish. So chicken and pork mostly, but I try to eat beef a couple times a week. Okay. I don't do a lot of shakes and bars, good. but I get most good. food from like whole real food. Yeah. Good. Um, good. good. Yeah. So look, stop, cut the running, uh, okay. bump your calories to, it says here that you think your maintenance is around 22. 18 to 18 to 2000 maybe. Yeah, I, I would I would bump your calories up to 1800 calories. Okay. No more running. If you want How long does it take you to do your morning runs? Uh, about 45 minutes. Okay, do a 45 minute walk. Okay? Just just and and it's not a workout. Don't walk like I'm going to work, you know, this is my, you know. Yeah. Literally, okay. it's literally med- meditative. Yeah, you just cruise, okay? Yeah. Just like okay. if you just just cruise for the same amount of time. Bump your calories to 1800. When you start to feel really good, which you'll start to notice within two or three weeks, bump your calories again up to 2,000 and then keep doing what you're doing and pay attention to how strong you feel with the weights. I don't want you to cut your calories until you're starting to feel real strong, real healthy, and your calories are like around 2,500 or something like that and you feel good. Okay. I I guess I I hear you all tell people that, but I guess I've always assumed that you were talking to people that are thinner than me. I have like 30 pounds it of weight. Still, I mean, still doesn't, doesn't matter. I don't no. care if you had a hundred pounds. It doesn't matter. Extra on you. I'd still give you that same advice. Okay. It's, it's what it's about right now is getting, mm-hmm. getting you healthy and getting and and starting to tackle some of this stress because nothing you do, your body is not going to respond the way it should respond until right. we tackle that. So it's about getting healthy first and balancing all that and then getting the body to respond. And the idea right now with the advice of cutting out the running, increasing the calories, go get strong, is to build your metabolism. Yeah. So you that get way, flexibility. Yeah, that way when you do cut calories, you really start to lean out. So we, so let's do this too. So let's – I want to I have Doug put you in the private forum too so we can keep an eye on you because yep. – I'd love to I, give us two week check ins. Yeah, I'd love to hear you check in with us every two weeks, kind of giving us an update on how things are going, especially once you get rolling on Maps and a Ball, because I think that's when we're going to really start to see change. And Amber, pay attention to energy, mood, outlook, like sleep, sleep. Like, you know, if, oh. you, if you're always watching the scale, your, your water is going to fluctuate a lot as you go through this process. Uh, especially as inflammation goes down, you bump your calories, you're holding more glycogen, whatever, and that's going to mess with your head, okay? But look, just to just to hammer this home, 
if you keep pushing in the direction that you're pushing, not only will you not lose the body fat, you're gonna get to you're gonna get to a place There's where you're to go in that you're, direction. You're gonna get to a place where you'll start gaining body fat at very low calories. So, well, I believe that because I mean this. I mean, my son's five, and I've been trying to lose this same twenty or thirty pounds for five years. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. What y'all are saying makes a lot of sense because I didn't have the trouble before him, but I. I, I can't get my husband. And I can't have children. So we went through IVF three times and then my pregnancy was bad. And so I think maybe it, it's all kind of making sense now that it's all just a stress problem. Yeah. And I've just been more stress onto myself trying to lose weight. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, I want you to listen. I'm going to say this again. I want you to feel good about what I'm saying. Okay. Cause okay. I can, I can tell you're afraid uh, of, of, of making these changes cause you don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. Okay. I've heard you your story at least a thousand mm -hmm. times. Yeah. Okay. I, this is nothing you said to me is like wow or perplexing or shocking. Um, it's all super common. I've worked with women like you so mm -hmm. many times. The challenge was always getting them to trust me and to trust the process. It's a snowball effect. What you're going to notice first though is you're going to start to just feel better. So you'll just notice like, oh man, I. I'm starting to feel good. I think mm -hmm. I'm starting to feel really good. Like that's it. That's that's what you'll start to notice. But as far as the body fat and all that stuff, that's going to take a little bit of time because we got to <laughs> get your body to feel safe enough to lose the body fat. Because right now it doesn't. It doesn't feel safe at all. Okay. All right. That's right. That Check, makes sense. Check in with us every two weeks. We're going to send anabolic over to you and then follow up with us. Okay. Yep. I will. Thank y'all so much. You all got right, it. Thanks, you Amber. got this. All right. This is why <clears throat> this is why good coaches are so important yeah. because uh, you know thankfully we have a forum and maybe our words are they have more weight with her because she's listening to listen to us for two years and etc. Mm -hmm. But the reason why one of the reasons why a coach is so valuable is because when you go through this process, it's not as easy as just you heard what I said. Oh, that sounds good. Let me try it. She's going to question it yep. the entire time. Mm -hmm. The entire time she's going to question. And when you have a good coach, the good coach can tell you what you're going to feel. Here's what's going to happen. Here's why it's happening. The constant reassurance. Yeah. Okay. Trust me. We're moving in the right direction. And then when you start to feel and notice the things and you start to go, oh my gosh, this mm. is really working, then it becomes a lot easier. So, but I feel for her, man. I've, I've had so many clients with the exact same, exact same symptoms. Exact same. I wonder how many people are listening just like her, who the advice that we're giving to say her is perfect for them, but they think that they're different. They're different. Yeah. I know. I mean, that's such a crazy, like, it's so crazy because we have addressed uh, almost identical uh, question as this, right? Yeah. And, and her thought was, oh, because I'm not, I have 30 more pounds. Yeah. I have 30 pounds. It's like, let me make this clear. She could have been 150 pounds overweight mm -hmm. and I still would give this advice. Yep. This, this, this still would be the advice for someone. So just, it's not just because you have way more weight to, to lose in that person. And then the same would go if you maybe only had about 15 pounds or 20 pounds. If you're, if this is your symptoms and this is what you, how you've been treating your body and this is the level yeah. of stress you have going on, this, this advice is the same. And if you were a man and you had all the <laughs> advice would stay the same yep. here. So yep. the only, the only, the only, the only difference would have been, and she, she, you know, the answer was there because she says, every time I try to lose weight, in this way, this is what happens to me. Mm -hmm. The only other thing I would have asked, if this is the first time that this happened to her, was I would have asked if she's had any nutrient deficiency tests, if she's had any changes to her hormones, hormones yeah. or because those could also cause some of this stuff. But the fact that she's repeatedly done this and had these, this exact experience, and then you know, ask her questions about her lifestyle. Just plateaued and stalled for yeah, five listen, years. Yeah, listen, you're, you're a stay-at-home mom. She's like, I live in the, you know, out in the country and I homeschool. Okay, so you know what that means. Everything she does is for her family and probably does almost nothing for her. Mm -hmm. And she's always on her feet because she's got a bunch of shit to do. So that it was really easy to cut out the running. That's that one stress I could easily just cut out and then get her body in a place to where it can start responding. Our next caller is Sam from New York. Sam, what's going on? How can we help you? How you doing? Good, good. we're good. What's um, happening? Thanks for having me on. You got it. So um, I'm calling because I'm uh, apparently what you call a hard gainer. And I'm 58. Um, I'm in the middle of my second round of uh, anabolic. And uh, I keep 
trying to eat more and more, but I don't seem to be putting on any weight. Uh, I actually did lose a few pounds initially, which I assume was some fat. Um, I don't know if I should be lifting more, or if I need to keep increasing my food intake, or if you have any suggestions. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I'm reading your email here, Sam, and it says uh, that you're stronger. Yes. How, how much stronger? Tell me about your like the differences in your lifts. Uh, well, b before doing anabolic, I had never done deadlifting, so I started out pretty low, but I'd say I'm doing 70 more pounds than when I started. Okay. That's incredible. Right. What about your and, like, your bench press, all that stuff? Bench press, I've increased working out with it, probably 50 pounds. Wow. And, okay. Um, the same with my squats. Wow. Yeah, you're, you're doing pretty good right now. Yeah, you're doing all right. And then it says here you work a job in construction. What kind of work do you do? Uh, we're electrical contractors, so I'm a foreman, so it's not as physical as it used to be, but I'm still moving a lot yeah, all the time. Yeah, a lot. Yeah, for sure. You are. All right, so look. So you get stronger. There's a few different reasons how or ways that your body gets stronger. One of them is the your your, your central nervous system adapts, and so that's like the – that's like the, the the computer, right? And it's sending the signal to the muscles and you get more what's called neural drive. You get better technique and form, just like um, anything else. And so that'll increase your strength. But then you also build muscle, which will also increase your strength. Now, the strength gains that you've experienced, a big part of that is probably central nervous system because you just got started. Some of it's muscle. Without body fat testing you and all that stuff, I would guess that you've probably already gained, you've probably gained some muscle with those strength gains and the scale went down a little bit and you probably did get, get leaner. Um, now, do you feel good? Do you sleep well? Do you feel like you have good energy? Any joint pain? Does everything else feel okay? Uh, well, I, I've never slept well, so I still don't, but I, I feel good and my workouts, I love the workouts. Um, and, um, you know, I, I have some achy joints, but a lot of that's probably job-related over the years, a little wear and tear on me, but I feel pretty good. Let me ask a little differently. Did, did any of those things change? Did your sleep get better or worse? Pain get better or worse? Pain, I think, is better. I feel better physically. Uh, my sleep still probably the same. The same, okay. Mm. So, all right, uh, yeah, you got to eat more. But you know what? Because you're talking about your sleep, um, uh, I would – really focus on and I don't know what you've done what you've already done to try to improve your sleep we can get into that right. but that'll make a big difference with getting your body to build a little bit more muscle have you done any interventions any kind of uh a protocol you know before bed not really okay so okay. I think I think there's some gold there yeah, yeah. like oh, sleep makes a sleep yeah. makes a huge difference Sam. what is your tell me about your sleep what's wrong with it what does it look like uh I tend to go to sleep you know, nine o'clock at night because I get up at four thirty, but I don't usually make it past two thirty, three o'clock before I wake up. Mm. Okay. And in and out, you know. And then in, in and out from there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You drink coffee or have caffeine? Two cups in the morning. That's pretty much it. That's it. It's always been that way. Yeah. Mm. Okay. And I try to eat after dinner much either because I. I've never been one of uh, much of a breakfast eater, so I try try not to eat at night so that I can eat in the morning. Okay, how's your blood pressure? Uh, last I checked, it was normal. No, no, no health issues. Not that I'm aware of. No. All right, here's what we're gonna try. I want you to try taking some electrolytes throughout the day. Uh, we work with a company called Element Element T, and you can add up one packet or so to your water. And I want to see if that makes a difference um, with your sleep. But then before you go to bed, I think a magnesium supplement yeah, would be really good as well. There's another company we work with called Ned that makes a, a product called Mellow. And you take that right before you go to bed and see if that makes a difference. In my experience, the people that seem to respond the best to magnesium supplementation uh, before bed seem to be people who work jobs like you, okay? So I have a lot of blue-collar um, family members, um, and I've I've had them all try Mellow, and all of them are like, whoa, what? Mm -hmm. And I think it's just, 
because of the type of activity yeah. you've been doing, you've been doing There's it for so long. For it. Yeah, I think you're you, you probably have a little bit of a, a deficiency, possibly. It's quite okay. common. It won't hurt you to try, but you'll notice a difference within one or two nights uh, if that's the deal. Now, besides that, you got to eat more. I hate to tell you. Yep. And <laughs> you, you know, you got one of those. We you, you got one of those fast metabolisms. Um, yeah. So, have you tried adding shakes to your day? Because that would be the easiest way to add calories. I did. I'm doing a thousand calorie shake smoothie in the morning because I was never a breakfast eater. Um, and I'm, I'm pushing to get 3000 calories a day right now, but I usually fall a little short. Yeah. Probably 800. I, mean, I mean, he's an example of somebody who I would let hyper palatable foods oh, in yeah. his diet just so we can get some calories up there. One last thing too, that I want to ask about, uh, have you had your hormones checked, uh, at all any time recent? No, I've never had anything done like that. I, considering considering your age and the fact that you have a hard time eating enough calories and we don't get a lot of good sleeping. sleep yeah. and sleep could absolutely deeply affect that. Yeah. I'd love to get you, love to have you get your blood work done and just see, just where, see where, you're, where you're at. Just to see where your testosterone levels are at because you want to talk about a massive difference of packing on muscle and weight if your testosterone is in the dumpsters yeah. And and you're doing all this training and all this exercise, and you just have you're not going to gain a lot of weight or build a lot of muscle, but simply addressing that could make a massive yeah, difference too. And with the appetite, by the way, yeah. appetite will increase a lot of times too when you increase your if testosterone. You go from low to high. Are yes. you? How, is your libido normal? Do you have a like okay libido, or do you have you not, notice any changes in it? No, it seems the same. Okay. Okay. Seems I mean, you can, yeah, you, you know, get your, I think it's a good idea always to get your hormone levels checked anyway, because if they're good, if they're at a nice level, then you'll have something to reference to it, you know, to, to later, you know, let's say when you're in your sixties or seventies, Every, everything we've talked about too, by the way, Sam, cause I know I see you taking notes and stuff you can find at mindpumppartners.com. So that's the list of all the companies, right? So you'll see element on there. You'll see the Ned company on there. And then there's actually a company too, that you can take uh, get your blood work done and have them look at your uh, your testosterone levels all through there, transcend, which yeah. is Transcend. So all three of those companies yeah. are are connected. But to besides that. the sleep, you know, and and because uh, I think that's a big one. Uh, you, you know, you're doing your smoothie in the morning. Another thing you could do. So you got that. Then you eat your lunch. Then you eat your dinner. Is to add either shakes or something that is easy and tasty for you to eat in between meals. So you could have more shakes, you could have nuts, you could have jerky, cheese, but basically you want to just, you, you got to eat more. The fact that you're getting stronger is a very good sign. If you keep getting stronger, you will build muscle. I mean, that's just the bottom line. So if you weren't getting stronger, then there'd be, I'd be, I'd be a little bit more worried in the sense of, okay, let's try to figure this out. But the fact that you're getting stronger is very good. That means that you're doing a lot of things right. And some and, it, and building muscle is a slow process. It just is. It's just nobody packs on muscle very, very quick, especially if it's lean. If you're the kind of person that you got one of those metabolisms or just gaining body fat's even hard for you, then you know you can't expect to gain more than you know five, six, seven, eight, ten pounds of muscle in a year. It's just it just takes a long time. People are like, yeah, I gained twenty pounds and whatever. A lot of it's body fat, you know. Um, so. I was expecting too much too soon. Yeah, yeah you're, I mean, you're doing. How long have you been working out now with this? Uh, with your program since uh, end, end of August, I guess. You're not. You're not doing bad. You yeah. know, and yeah. it's literally just going to be about being conscious about getting those calories in, and then mm -hmm. if the element T and the mellow help with your sleep, that's going to make a huge difference. Yeah, I actually, yourself in recovery. I mean, those are your two main uh, levers right now. Yeah, I actually think you're doing really good right now, Sam. I, but I do think that all the advice we gave is all things that are going to take you to the next level. But I think your progress, believe it or not, even though I know your main goal is probably to put weight on, you are building muscle. It's just, and what happens too, is you build a couple pounds of muscle, the metabolism gets even faster. Mm -hmm. So then you have even more calories yeah. you eat to keep that pace up. And so that's probably why you lost a little bit of weight on the scale. So you just leaned out a little bit because you got more muscle now on the body. So you're not doing any uh, cardio on top of all this, are you? Just work pretty, yeah, yeah. pretty yeah. active at work all day, but yeah. just making sure. No, you're good. I mean, if you weren't getting stronger, then this would be a different conversation. Yeah. I actually think you can, uh, I know Sal only told you one packet, but I think you can afford to, to walk around at work with drinking, uh, sipping on the LMNT, and then also probably when he works out. 
Yeah, I mean, you could uh, probably afford to easily have that. It just, much. It, it just depends. I would start one, just see how you feel. But you know, uh, the, the I've had tremendous success with the people in my family who do the kind of work that you do by adding the you know, so long as it's not con contraindicated, so long as your doctor isn't saying you got high blood pressure, avoid this and that. If anything's, if things are okay. You add that. The element also has some magnesium. It's got potassium, magnesium, but it's mostly sodium. And then the company, Ned, that makes the Mellow, it has a, a magnesium blend in there that is specific for uh, the brain and for the muscles in the body. And so a common side effect of, of not having enough magnesium is not that you can't fall asleep, it's that you can't stay asleep. So the fact mm -hmm. that you told me that you wake up at two or three o'clock in the morning, and then you're tossing and turning until you got to get up. That's why I recommended that. And it's and it's an inexpensive supplement. The, the 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 ones we mentioned aren't these like they're they're very inexpensive uh, and they're ones you can always take. You don't have to like cycle it or anything like that. Yeah. All right, great, thanks. You think there's any value in him? So he's he's on his second round right now of Maps and a ball. Yep. Is there any route, any value in potentially moving him to like a Maps 15 or another program to, for him to try out? He could, but I mean, what you know, we could send we could send you another program to do after this next round of anabolic. But I want you to stay in Maps anabolic and do the things that we said, yeah. just so we could see you he know kind of what's going on. Gains, yeah, I'd like to see it through one more time, and then we'll yeah maybe switch yeah, him in. Yeah, what do you guys think? Maps give him like Maps fifteen. How do yeah? I think that's another uh, another solid option for him is is Maps fifteen. I think we'll sure. send you another program, Sam, just for free. And then when you're done with this round of Maps anabolic, follow Maps fifteen, but do the advanced version. Okay, awesome. Okay. You got it, man. All right, Sam. Stay in touch, huh? Thank you. Uh, All right. Yes, yeah, uh, it's so funny when somebody gets on at his age and says that, there's about 15 other people who are like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I, I'm glad. I wish I had a tough time. I'm anyway. glad we talked long enough to yeah. figure that out, that he's actually just really getting started. Yeah, uh -huh. he's doing fine. So he's just doing really good. And, you know, here's a funny thing. I'm glad point. he talked about the sleep, though, because that's that's an issue. Well, there's that's out. where I said there's gold there, right? There's if, if He's always been a poor sleeper, and he's never tried to figure that piece out. Him figuring that out could be massive. I have a feeling, too, if he actually goes and does his blood work and gets his hormones, that he's going to have lower testosterone, too. Maybe. Yeah. 58 years old, low calorie. The also sleep will also negatively affect it. Yeah, and poor sleep. Probably it, and the fact that his libido hasn't gotten worse, it may have always been kind of low, and so it's not like yeah. he noticed. He doesn't know what good feel. How many times have we met somebody who All doesn't think they feel bad? Well, it's, it's just that they, until they, they feel better. It's interesting like, because I had a client like similar to this, but uh, took like a month. Uh, never done it before. Took a month off in like a tropical place. Got a ton of sun, a lot of sleep. Came back completely like transformed. Yeah, and it was like it just. The, like it was almost like resetting your your entire body in the in the circadian rhythms like everything like balancing the hormones i mean there's just so much there in rest and recovery that you know even like a massive intervention like that but i'm sure would impact what's, them what sucks is a lot of the things that uh, are attributed to aging yeah are often symptoms of it's just repeated patterns yeah chronic, just, it's just, chronic stuff yeah, it's, chron just, it's chronically being under vitamin d chronically under magnesium yeah. chronically poor sleep and that causes all those things. all i yeah. mean like like yeah. i told you guys about my dad he had all these aches and pains and he's got arthritis everywhere and all that stuff and he's getting old you know he's older and you know he's just he, he's like oh my body still hurts my body here i can't figure it out i've been this that and what's going on and he thinks oh it's just because i'm getting old well he went and get a vitamin d test and his vitamin d was low started taking vitamin d gone everything was gone yep so that's the problem is like getting older causes these things, but so does oftentimes like really easy to fill nutrient deficiencies and you often won't know unless you test. Our next caller is Nick from Hawaii. Nick, what's going on, man? How can we help you? What's up? Aloha guys. Um, super cool to see you kind of way there in the background, but uh, if you could help me out with a couple of questions, I'd appreciate it. You got it, man. Sure. Let's hear it. All right. Um, I hear people do background first. I don't know if that's a thing, or I can jump straight to the questions. Up to you guys. You can go right to the question, and then if we need to, we normally will ask background. We'll pry, yeah, yeah. Otherwise, got you. Sounds good. So, um, <clears throat> basically, I just jumped on uh, BPC one five seven. So, I recently injured myself at work, and I was just wondering if there's what I can expect, and if there's any side effects that you guys have noticed, or that's like the first half of my question. Oh, okay. Where's your injury? Uh, so lower back, possibly L5. I still haven't gotten my MRI, but I'm getting some sciatic pain <clears throat> down the right leg. So, you know, 
It feels like it's slowly getting better. I just started a couple of days ago with the injections, but that and the massage. I haven't yeah. started PT yet either. Oh, good. Okay, so you got some PT too. So, and Are you administering it yourself or do you have somebody administering the BPC for you? <clears throat> so my girlfriend is actually a PA. So I asked her if she would do it and she's like, you know, you ordered this thing. I'm not sure what this is. <laughs> I try to have her look into it. Um, but so basically, yeah, I did it myself yesterday for the first time. Okay, so... Are you injecting right into the site or are you somewhere else? Uh, so that's a question that I had. Is it, um, you know, is, is it better if I go right into the site? Yes, uh, yesterday yes, I injected yes, right into like belly fat. Yeah, it's so better it's to specific. go. It's better to go into the site. It is, but here's the deal. Okay. Depending on where the injury is, you, you want a medical professional. Yeah. Because you said you're L4, L5, talking about the spine. I would not try to get a long needle. No, to hit no, the no. area All there because right. yeah you could end up <laughs> you could end up with something pretty bad right <laughs> yeah, yeah that. not trying to no, do that just no, shooting no, into no. his low back would be better off than shooting I mean sub -Q, but. maybe but it's more systemic than that so systemically you'll get an effect meaning if you do it you know sub Q you'll get kind of the systemic anti-inflammatory kind of accelerated uh, you know healing type of an effect if there's a slipped or herniated disc. It may help it heal faster, but combining it with the physical therapy is your best bet because there could be something else that's going on. If everything's okay and it's just a muscle strain, yeah. muscle pull, um, then then you're going to be good. But I see you shaking your head. You're saying, you you think, no, no way. I mean, that that is my hope, but the fact that I have like the sciatic nerve shooting down my leg, like that pain. Um, originally, I had maybe my, my the first visit to the – urgent care when I went, I actually had some loss of strength in like oh. my uh, dorsiflexion in my foot. So that's kind of what really concerned the doctor the first time when he put me out. So that since has come back, I can feel that it's a little weaker than normal, but I still have that shooting sciatic pain. So that's what, that's basically what's got me worried. Oh, wow. Did you, how'd you heard it? Yeah. Uh, I was, <clears throat> opening this gate that work where we park our patrol cars and this thing has been broken for a while. It's a giant gate and it's probably a few hundred pounds. And it's kind of funny because I deadlift all the time <clears throat> as a trainer. And basically I lifted and twisted weird, like something like you guys say, right? Everybody kind of reaches in the backseat of their car and that's how they <laughs> injure their back. Mm -hmm. And that's basically what happened. So the, the thing that concerns me is the loss of uh, connection, the weakness. Right. So yeah. it could be a herniated disc that, or something, something like that that's inflamed and pressing on the nerve mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. uh, connects to those things. And oftentimes if the inflammation goes down, things get better, then the, the, the function comes back. So there's not much I can say until you get your MRI back and see what's going on. Because if there is something pressing on that nerve, um, you, you definitely want to get that addressed because then there's not much else you can do than try to work with what you got. Um, and if that get, of course, you know, look, you're, you're a trainer, you said. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Trainer yeah. and cop out here in Hawaii. So I got to do, you know, physical stuff all the time. Yeah. 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 Did you actually injury. feel a pop? Like, was it like, uh, cause I, I, don't I know did. Me, okay. Yeah. So there's, yeah, there's probably something there. It'd be interesting to see your MRI. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely get the MRI. See what that says. Work with a movement specialist, not just the surgeon. Yeah. I'm going to put you in the forum because, uh, I think one of the greatest movement specialists that we have, two of the greatest movement specialists yeah. between Dr. Brink and Jordan Shallow are both in our forum. And so awesome. in until we get a true diagnosis of what's going on, we're all going to be sitting here speculating quite yeah, a bit. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And I think our advice greatly depends on what the sure. diagnosis is before I tell you, oh, try some of these yeah. rehab movements. Or, right. oh, we take can have the rehab moves, but we don't know if it's a very good idea. Yeah, so I think I think right now, and and, by, and back to your BPC-157 as far as uh, what to expect or is there any side effects, there's no negative side effects you're going to feel from BP-157. They'll, and the only thing you may notice is recovery faster, which may be really difficult for you to measure and tell because this is the first time you've had this kind of major injury. So, like, I, I've re-injured certain parts of my body, used it, and I can tell how magical it is because something that would normally take me, say, two to four weeks to recover, I recover in seven to ten days. Like, so there's this – so it's like that, right? It makes that big of a difference as far as the recovery process, but it's – 
that's easy for me to measure because it's an injury that I've seen before in my body. And then I, something that's brand new, it might be hard for you to tell how effective it is, but it's, it's probably helping. The only, the only issue I would have with the BPC is that if you got it from a research chemical lab, uh, there's no telling the quality or the, you know, what's in there. Did you go through transcend or no? Yeah. So I actually went through transcend and it was funny because, uh, I placed the order I think on Friday, or I actually got to their compound lab on Friday, and I was like, hoping I could get it, sent them an email, I was like, hey, I'm going to be on the Mind Pump Q&A, maybe you guys could expedite it, <laughs> and they actually did overnight it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> smart guy. <laughs> All right, you guys real quick, so. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Transcend, making yeah, it happen. Yeah. Listen, yeah. Nick, Nick, you get oh, in the yeah. forum, tag uh, Dr. Justin Brink, and yeah. when you get your MRI, you could probably even show him mm -hmm. what the MRI looks like. And then you'll have a good idea of, you know, kind of where to go from there. Right. Awesome. Awesome. Could I throw in my little second half question that everybody gets? Yeah, 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 yeah do, do it. it. All right. So um, basically my schedule is pretty busy. I'm hoping uh, when I get back sooner than later, um, <clears throat> I'm just trying to figure out what's the best way for me to kind of maintain what I've built. Well, actually get back to where I was and maintain and also go on a little cut. Um, right now I'm like, Sitting at about 210. I'm 6'2. Um, I feel a little soft since I haven't been lifting for the last couple of weeks. Um, but basically, I train clients before I go into my shift at work on patrol. So I might work like a 12 or 16 hour shift, and maybe four hours prior to that, I'll go into the gym that I work at and train a client or two a few days a week. And uh, I feel like I miss out on a lot of workouts myself because I'm in there training other people. I try to do stuff in between um, or before I get to work, but I'm just wondering what's like the best program as, to run in my situation. So I, ha I have two thoughts around this. And I want to hear what the guys, if they agree with me or not on this one from because of your schedule, or everything going on uh, maps 15, I think would be a, a great resource for you. But I also think because of the injury that you've had and the type of work that you do, MAPS performance would really benefit you because of all just bulletproofing your body and the rotational stuff. So if you were a client, I'd actually try and kind of blend the two. I'd actually have you following more of a, a fifth, MAPS 15 type of a protocol because of the amount of work and stuff that you have in time. But then I would probably modify some of the movements to be more beneficial to like rotational strength and things like that that are going to benefit your your day to day work. So that's kind of where I'm thinking with him. Yeah, Nick. Nick the only thing is avoid right until you get the results of your MRI right, right, and it's conclusive. Avoid anything that requires that kind of stability. So you would do a lot of seated exercises, upper body exercises, and then for your lower body. You could do leg curls, leg extensions, uh, but no leg press, no squat, no mm -hmm. lunges, uh, no standing extra. Nothing that requires any stability from your lumbar, um, and so and that'll be the best thing you could do to. Well, to that's. I mean, loss. my advice is assuming you're fully recovered and you're yeah, back to yeah, training, and you're. Yeah, I'm answering that question that. right now. Right now, everything should be centered around rehab. I mean, everything that you do should be centered around recovering and getting back to yourself. Then after that, the advice I was giving, yeah. but yeah, no, I agree with Sal. Like right now yeah. it's, you have to, but like right now you could probably do leg extensions. You could probably do leg curls, um, and then just upper body stuff. Uh, machines come in handy here. So seated chest press, seated row, seated overhead press, like just like bodybuilder kind of stuff, just to keep yourself from, from losing muscle. Yeah. I think I'm going to have to get a membership to like plan fitness or something. So I work at a climbing gym, a rock climbing gym, and we just have a small gym area with free weights. So we don't have any really machines, but yeah, that's, I the, guess that's gonna be the irony of our, our advice for someone like you in this case would actually be a lot of machine work. Yeah. Yeah. I'd be doing a lot of machine and cable work with you right now. Just keep stimulus and volume mm -hmm. around the yeah, muscles. Just, just that's get really a pump. Is. Yeah. You want, you want to minimize any, anything that requires lots of core stability or less intensity, more in the volume. That's right. Spectrum. That's right. Okay, less intensity, more volume. Got you. Yeah, right on. You got yeah. it, man. So, hoping for the best. I appreciate your time. Yeah, we'll because see. You of your, because of your fitness level and your background and all that stuff, um, I wouldn't be too freaked out. I think whatever you're going to see is probably going to be okay. And you're going to be able to work with, um, you know. But if, but if you do have a herniated disc and it's swollen and pressing on the nerve, that's what you're going to feel. But the good news is that's 
often solvable, especially when somebody's fit. You know, we're not dealing with like this super mm -hmm. deconditioned individual where it's like it's going to be really hard. I mean, you're fit. You went into it fit. So yeah. just, just make sure you do the right thing because if you – Build up that strength stability again. So. Yeah, what you don't want to do is be like, ah, I think I feel okay. I'm going to go deadlift and then, you know, cause some real damage. So wait till you get that MRI and then go in the forum – Tag Justin Brink and 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 that guy. That guy's he, he's the best. He's the best at that. Got you. Thank you. Yeah, and hopefully don't need to fight no crazy bad guys too often. So. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Shit. That's, that's a fire. Shoot him. Shoot him. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna pull the cell and go jujitsu on the guy. We'll see you in the forum, Nick. Thanks, brother. All right. Thank you for your time, guys. Take it easy. Man. I've had a, um, I had a couple clients exact almost the exact same thing, where they they did have a herniated slight herniation, and it pressed on the nerve and it caused like loss of basically they couldn't they got a little numbness or whatever. Yeah, you know what's crazy is I so I used to train a surgeon who would work on backs, and I'll never forget we were sitting there talking about this and he goes you know what's weird Sal he goes. If we took 100 people outside right now and we imaged them. A lot of people have it, right? He goes, yeah. there would be a lot of people yeah. with, with stuff that I could see on the imaging yeah. that I would normally want to operate on, but they have no symptoms. No and he idea. goes, you want to know what else is weird? He goes, you know how many times I have people come in, we image them, we can't see anything wrong, and they have all this back pain? Yeah. This was years ago. It tripped me out. Yeah. Well, when it's pressed on the nerve, I mean, that's a yeah. pretty obvious, like, okay, we got to yes. address this. I also yeah. want to take this as an opportunity to shout out Mass Performance, because if you looked at our three core programs, Mass Performance has sold the least of anabolic performance and aesthetic, yep. right? Everybody is drawn to anabolic and, of course, aesthetic for sculpting. And it's, like, significantly different amount. But the truth is... Everybody who's training those two programs should absolutely have rotations of MAPS performance in there for this exact reason, right? Yep. You could be the strong, fit guy who can deadlift all this weight and simply just rotating or twisting a certain way yep. that's out of a normal movement right. pattern that you would do. And this is how all of my clients that yep. I train got hurt. Nobody ever got hurt yep. deadlifting or squatting with me. They always got hurt doing a movement that was rotating or twisting, and it was always light and easy, pulling weeds, picking up the shampoo bottle, lifting a gate and rotating. It's always something like that. And that program, that's a lot of how we designed that was to bulletproof the body for these exact reasons. 100%. Our next caller is Justin from Ohio. What up, Justin? Justin, what's happening? What's happening? Hey, guys. Thank you for uh, taking my question today. You got it, man. So a uh, little bit of background about me and where this question is coming from. So I'm 41 years old, uh, about 6'2", 215, somewhere between 20 and 25% body fat. Um, about 15 years ago, I had uh, half my thyroid removed due to a tumor. And so ultimately, that kind of led, my, led to me gaining and fluctuating weight, a lot of water retention, things like that. Ultimately, the other half kind of gave out and they put me on a low dose of Synthroid. But you know, because of that, I entered into some very unhealthy relationships with diet and exercise. So the past you know, 15 years of my life, I've been you know, hopping from program to program, trying different crash diets, things like that. Kind of came to a crash this summer where I was, you know, doing a pretty intense uh, training regimen, also running and hitting the Peloton sometimes on the same day, all while eating somewhere between 1,800 and 2,200 calories. And when I found you guys, I recognized some of the damages I was doing to my body. So uh, this summer, uh, really at the end of the summer, I started, you know, consuming a lot of the content you guys are putting out and cut all my training, uh, got anabolic just doing two days a week on that, um, started a reverse diet. So I've ramped up slowly to where I'm about 2,700 calories now. Um, put on about 15 pounds over that time. But again, I'm trying not to focus on the numbers, trying not to look at the scale. And uh, ultimately, that leads me to my question of, you know, do you guys have any tips or tricks to deal with the psychological aspects of a reverse diet? And how do I know when to stop, right? Because, I mean, this is really just messing with my brain. So that's all. I mean, it's a, this is a great question, and I think super common when somebody is going through a reverse diet, especially for the first time. When I train a client like you, uh, especially when you've you've actually gained, like you got pretty good momentum right now. It sounds like you've increased your calories quite a bit. You've been able to reduce a ton of ac activity and movement. So just think about, first of all, just think about that for a minute. Like you've radically reduced the amount of calorie burn you've been doing. Uh, while also increasing calories and the scale. And then I'm assuming if you're lifting weights too, you know, you've, if some of that 15 pounds, 
probably a good amount of that's definitely some muscle. Do you feel a lot stronger? I am getting stronger. I definitely feel different than when I did this summer. So. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm actually getting ready to finish anabolic. And so I was thinking about just doing it again uh, to kind of compare some of those numbers. Not a bad idea. Um, and you're doing the two day a week version? I did, yeah. What do you, what do you, what other activity are you doing? Uh, just daily dog walk. That's it. I tried. I cut all cardio other than just like a walk in the morning, walk in the evening. Oh, he can okay. go to three right. days a week. You can do three. Yeah, do yeah. the three day a week version of maps. Go so three day a week, and then where I was heading with that conversation was first of all that that that's how I would start it is is making you realize what, how far you've already come. Like you're doing a really good job right now, and then I would say to a client like you say, hey, listen, if I can show you how good you're doing already, just by simply cutting your calories for two weeks to watch what will happen. I mean, you can do that where you'll interrupt a reverse diet or interrupt a bulk with a short period of cutting just so you can get that psychological relief of like, oh, wow, okay, I see yeah. I see what's going on here. I could, in, it just if you're at 2,700, I could take you down to 2,000 to 22 for two weeks and you'll watch yourself lean out. You will. You And to, to, just to show and prove to my client, we're, we're doing the right thing. Can you see? Like, look at, boom, we'll just cut the calories, watch how the body responds just in two weeks, not changing anything else but the, the diet part. And then I would put you right back to the reverse again and say, come on, let's yeah, keep going. Let's exactly. Keep it, let's keep going down this path. Let's get this sucker up to 3,400, 3,500 calories and just imagine what it's going to look like when we cut down to 2,500 calories. And so, but a lot of times that will really help my clients psychologically or just me constantly reminding them like, man, you are like, think about that. You were doing Peloton, you were running, you were doing all this movement, you were eating less calories. Now you're eating more, eating more calories, moving less and building muscle, building strength. And you've only gone up on the scale 15 pounds. Like we're, we're doing the right I, thing. I, I would add a third day. So I would follow the maps. So maps anabolic gives you that, you know, a B workout. So you just, now you go A, B. So it'd be Monday, Wednesday, Friday instead of like whatever you're doing now. So add that extra day. Go ahead and cut your calories for – go ahead and do it for three weeks, four weeks. That's fine. Nothing wrong with that. Just see how you feel and then go back on the reverse diet. All right, so – Just don't get caught because what happens sometimes is yes. you, you, you start leaning out. Then you get real excited. You want to keep going that direction. Yeah. And two to three weeks turns into six to eight weeks. And then before you know it, then yeah. you hit a hard plateau. Yeah. Frustrated again. Now, Just here's the key to overcoming the psychological aspect uh, of of what you're going, of what you're going through. The key is always going to be to change the patterns of thinking. So, anytime you find yourself going in that direction, catch yourself and think of something else, and then don't weigh yourself. Literally, don't weigh yourself. Don't pay attention to that, and place your focus on the strength that you feel in the gym. It's a much better place to put your your focus especially when you're on a reverse diet because you're going to get stronger and that's going to encourage you that you're moving in the right direction. Every time you weigh yourself, it's going to be that reminder of, uh oh, am I doing the right thing? What's going on or whatever. Mm -hmm. But if you just focus on your strength, um, that's going to be great because if you're doing it right, you'll be getting stronger. But there'd be nothing wrong with a cut for three or four weeks. Just don't get, Adam hit the nail on the head. Is, uh, is you, you, may, you might see some weight loss and be like, uh oh, here we go. Let's add some cardio. Let's add some, let's cut more calories. Or and you don't want to end up at 1,500 calories at your size, you know, trying to get leaner because then, you know, where that ends up. It's it's not a really sustainable, good sustainable place. Yeah. No, I mean, it's, uh, I really appreciate the insight and kind of help them talk through that. Because again, I, uh, like you said, Adam, it's, uh, you, you get that taste of it, right? Oh man, I'm starting to lean out. I can, yeah. I can make it by summer. So yeah, I hear <laughs> yeah. where you're going with it. So yeah. I appreciate you, it. You're hitting yeah. your protein targets, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Really been focused on sleep. You know, I'm averaging between seven and eight and a half hours a night. So oh, good. just really good. trying to focus on recovery. Excellent. Yeah, it, so, it sounds like you're doing really good, yeah. bro. And your and your yeah. and your uh, your 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 T your T three T four everything's balanced with your, your. How long have you been thyroid on uh, synthroid? About thirteen years. Oh, you're good. So mm. the the newest thing was they put me on uh, calcitriol for. Um, the hypoparathyroidism as well. So those, the two parathyroids got removed as well. Okay. Um, so the active vitamin D3 is a little new to me. That's about it been going on about a year. So still playing around with some of that stuff. How do you do with hmm. carbohydrates? Um, I feel like I do pretty well. Okay. Um, okay, good. Yeah. What about gluten? Never noticed any problems. Actually, uh, one of the, I got 
Dr. Jabal's test sitting down on the counter. It got here uh, yesterday. So I'm going to do a food sensitivity test and see how that turns up. Okay. Oh, good. Yeah. Oftentimes, not always, but oftentimes people with anything related to the thyroid, um, gluten tends to be an issue. Gluten, alcohol. Yeah, alcohol is the other one. But gluten is because, uh, and there's some data that, this, that supports this, but this is a lot of this is just anecdote. Uh, in, in my experience, the functional medicine practitioners I work with, that, that people with thyroid type issues either develop antibodies or, you know, like you look at people like Hashimoto, stuff like mm-hmm. that. You know, high thyroid related issues, gluten tends to be an issue with them more than the average person. But you'll see from this test that you're doing with them. You could also just experiment by cutting gluten out and eating carbs from other sources and see how you feel after a few weeks. But that'd be the only thing I'd say, the other thing I'd say look at. Okay. No, I appreciate it. Yeah, I'm mostly a potatoes and rice guy for carbs. So, oh, there you go. Awesome. After you do MAPS Anabolic, I'd like to put you on a different program. Um, how, do you have access to a gym or is this a home gym? Uh, a little bit of both. So, I travel for work, but I always can find a, find a gym on the road. But I have a pretty good home set up as well. Okay. Um, I actually just purchased Performance. Uh, and thought about going to it, but again, as I'm kind of winding down on anabolic, that's when it kind of hit me like, maybe I should try this again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong with anabolic. Performance is amazing. It's one of the best programs someone can do. I'm going to send you MAPS Powerlift because uh, at some point, if you start to get frustrated, like you start to get like, oh God, am I, you know, I'm worried about getting weight, losing weight. Like Powerlift is a strength program, period, end of story. And that's all you're going to focus on. It's a really good program for people who, who struggle with the reverse diet situation because, I mean, power lifts about getting strong. So it, it, it's a really good place to place your focus. I'll send you that so you have it, okay? I love hearing you toggle between those three, by the way, too. Like anabolic, interrupt with performance next, and then do power lift and kind of do a rotation like that. That's you, amazing. That would be great. Yeah, yeah. That, that's, those are a great combo of, of uh, programs to have. That sounds awesome. No, I really appreciate it. Thank you. You got it, man. All right, Justin. Thanks for calling in. Thank you all. Appreciate the appreciate the insight. Thank you. You got it, brother. Right. You, you know, for people listening right now, the psychological aspect is always yeah. the challenge. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Nothing else is mm-hmm. a challenge. It's always the mental games. Always, always, always. It's so tough. It's so challenging to deal with it. And the best approach that I've seen that work that I, I'll do for myself, uh, I've seen with clients, it's the place, because I could easily, you know, it's easy to say, just don't think about that. Like, okay, well, what do I think about? <laughs> Where do I go? It's like, place your focus on something else. Yeah. And if, you're, if your fear is gaining body fat, well, put your focus on getting strong. That'll help you. That'll help encourage you to eat enough nutrients. Because getting, you can't eat too little and get strong. It just doesn't work. Well, a crazy part about this, I think this is the second person today that we talked to that actually is doing really well. Yeah, he's mm-hmm. doing good. I mean, if, put it in perspective. Like, okay, he if you put 15 pounds on the scale and you've been training and you eat relatively good, but you, you we could probably guess for sure there's been some body fat, there's been some muscle, and there's definitely some water. So 15 pounds while dramatically reducing the amount of cardio activity, only strength training two two days a week, increasing your calories by a significant amount, that's a fucking huge win. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's a huge win. Yeah, he's a big guy. So 15 pounds, if if the five of that was lean body mass, it could easily be another five body fat and five water. Um, so that's not bad at all when you're reverse dieting from a position where he came from, where he had dealt with and, being overweight. And, and well, the reason why I bring that point up is if this was a client of mine, many times I'd be encouraging, just work, keep going. Yeah. Keep going. We're going Spring right. Bring it out further. Just let's keep going on this, on this path. We're heading the right direction. <laughs> but I also recognize, cause I've had this so many times where someone that's, they're really struggling with the psychological totally. part. Mm-hmm. And so I'll interrupt it sometimes just to show them like, okay, let me show you what we've accomplished already. Bam. I take them down a low that's calorie it. for a couple weeks and they go, Oh my God. They say, they say, okay, but this, that'll end if we just stay here. So let's get back on our plan and just trust this process. And a lot of times that gains their confidence in, okay, he knows what we're doing. We got this. 100%. Look, if you're a trainer or a coach, you love the show, you want to learn how to become more successful. You want to get your clients better results, more sustainable results, and you want to make more money and you want to work less. You can do all those things. We've trained trainers and coaches for years. Go to Mind Pump Trainer. Dot com. Sign up. There's a three-day course I'll be doing for free 
for trainers and coaches. Also, if you want to find all of us on Instagram, you can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin. You can find me at Mind Pump to Stefano and Adam at Mind Pump Adam. <laughs>